Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto grows up neglected and alone and Minato bashing part 1 before I start please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2. Do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well let's start the video. Yua. Yua. A baby's crying pierced the deafening silence of Konoha's hospital. That's how I interpret a baby's cries in writing. The Yandame Hokage, who was waiting outside the emergency room stood up with an anxious look on his rather charming face. After more than three hours of sitting in a teal-colored bench outside the emergency surgery room, Minato was more than glad to see the in-surgery sign above the two-sided door that led into the emergency room, lit off. A busted blonde wearing a green-colored surgery outfit walked out of the room, while taking off her face mask. Tsunade, how is my wife and my son? Minato immediately asked as Tsunade wiped the sweat off her forehead, but she grinned nonetheless. The operation was a success. Congratulations, you are now a father of two sons. The Yandame's face lit up when he noticed something two sons? Tsunade merely laughed a little yes, Kushina had twins. Minato looked shocked for a moment before a serious look dawned his face. Tsunade, I have to see my wife now. The blonde looked confused at the seriousness Minato was emitting and said nothing while leading him into an emergency ward that Kushina was just moved to. Upon entering the room, Tsunade and Minato could see her obvious weariness and, similar to Minato, a serious look. The Yandame looked down, unable to face his wife. Tsunade was confused, normally. A husband would have ran to his wife and hugged her after the excruciating process of giving birth, and was thinking about lecturing Minato when he spoke. Kushina, you know what I am going to do, right? He asked as a tear slid down Kushina's face. Minato, don't do this. I can't afford to lose you nor our son. Tsunade finally realized what was going on. How could she forget? With the Kyubi right at Kanoha's doorstep, the Hokage had only one way to defeat the beast. He had planned on sealing the Kyubi into his newborn son, but did not expect to have twins. The sealing jutsu he had planned to use could only sustain a single chakra channel and not to mention the Kyubi's chakra was impossible to separate. The beast's massive chakra reservoirs only served as an unbreakable wall to all kinds of jutsus. So sealing half of Kyubi into both of them was out. Minato had to decide which one. Minato, you can't choose one over the other. It's just not fair. Kushina pleaded. The mentioned blonde looked at her in frustration. What am I supposed to do, Kushina? I don't want to do this, but there is no choice. He shouted, There's always another choice, Minato. Please I'm begging you, Kushina cried out while softening at the end. Minato softened his serious face damned if I do, damned if I don't. He joked, giving a soft laugh. Deciding to lighten the situation, Tsunade spoke what are their names, Kushina. She asked, truly curious about their names. Kushina blushed in embarrassment well. I didn't expect a twin. But me and Minato had decided if our child was a boy, he would be called Naruto. And if it was a girl, she would be named Naruko. Minato smiled well. We have one of their names. What about the other? I am thinking a name of more are yet simple he muttered while holding his chin, completely forgotten about the Kyubi. Jean Kushina whispered. His name will be Jean, which means virtue and benevolence. Namake's Jean, Namake's Jean that sounds wonderful. That shall be his name then. Minato flashed a smile. Kushina gave a sad smile to Jean. Jean, she called for humanity. It shall be your burden to carry. Minato, I understand your position. If you really require your son as a host, then take Jean. As his name implies, let this be his first act of benevolence. Jean also means humanity. The blonde Hokage took the infant from Kushina gently. He brushed Jin's hair lightly. Take care of Kushina, Tsunade. As the last favor for me, Minato asked as tears welled up in his eyes. Silent tears invaded the blonde medic's eyes as she savored the last time she would see her teammate's student. Though not of the same age, they were close friends. Kushina, Jiraiya, Minato and herself. Tsunade nodded. Minato shifted through several hand seals in quick succession. Kuchios no jutsu, he shouted and outside the hospital window, a giant puff of smoke appeared and when the smoke dispersed, a gigantic battle frog smoking a pipe with the equally large tanto in hand appeared with the smoke. The summoned toad looked into the window Minato you ready? He asked in a loud and deep voice. I'm coming Bunta. I will be leaving, Kushina, I love you. And with that, he jumped onto the battle toad and it leaped from the hospital to the battlefield. Tichi Hero's Biro Tichi R. We present to you, the Yandame Hokage, Namike's Minato and his son, Namike's Jean. The Yandame walked up to the podium, holding his son, Namike's Jean. Last night, he said as he began his aftermath speech. As you all know, the Kyubi attacked Kanoha. At this, many looked down, loved ones lost due to the beast's rampage. But one thing also occurred last night, the defeat of the Kyubi. He shouted and at this, cheers and claps erupted from the villagers. Last night, my wife, Namike's Kushina gave birth to my child. Namike's Jean. With a forbidden fuinjutsu I used, I was able to seal the Kyubi within my own newly born son, Yandame said with pride. But this though, the villagers were unsure whether to cheer or demand for the death of the infant. Seeing their uncertainty, the Yandame decided to proceed. 
I left the hospital room that my wife is now still currently residing in, with knowledge of my death, due to the jutsu's requirement of the user's life. The crowd gasped, unable to fathom the fact that the Yandame should be dead. Yet, by miracle, I survived. Truthfully, I don't know how. I can only say Lady Luck shined on me. Yandame joked as a few in the crowd laughed. This is the host of the QB, he declared as he hoisted Jean in the air. He is the savior of Kanoha, who now, at this very moment, has the burden of imprisoning the QB. Minato shouted. Cheers and claps once again exploded in the crowd. Yet none of them realized one important thing. Throughout the speech, he had not mentioned once of Naruto's existence. Tchiro's Brotchr. Jean now tried to focus. Reach within you the Yandame's patient voice told his son. Do you feel the chakra? He asked. Aforementioned Jean was currently five years of age. Wearing a white GI, his father was teaching him the basics of chakra usage. Jean was what some would call a late bloomer. Average children was capable of summoning their chakra for the first time at the age of four. But a year had passed for Jean and he was currently training to grab his chakra for within. I, I feel it, Dad. I feel it. It's a warm feeling and a strange familiarity. Jean cried out happily. Minato grinned, that's my boy. He said like Jean had done the most incredible thing in the world. And Jean gave himself a self-satisfied smirk. It was pathetic, really, in Naruto's opinion. Naruto had inherited his father's golden blonde hair and sapphire blue eyes. When he was a child, his hair was spiked wildly, in all directions. He had taken to combing his hair, and now, from a year of combing, his spiked hair had calmed down and became a layered fringe. Think Nero from Devil May Cry, and Jean had a mix of his father's yellow hair with his mother's red hair, to create a brownish-orange colored hair, with spikes at the back and an eno like fringe at the front on his right eye. Speaking of his eyes, he had his mother's black eyes. I don't know Kushina's eye color, as Yandane teach Jean personally, Naruto had been training by himself. Ever since he could remember, his parents had always shown an obvious favoritism towards Jean. As the Jinchuriki, they were always so proud he had saved Konoha, despite the obvious lack of talent in his part. Reaching his chakra Naruto could do that since he was three. He was now while walking on the ceiling of the dojo they were all training in. As he walked directly above Jean, he was grabbed from the collar by Minato and pulled to the ground. He landed in a heap, taken by surprise though the Yandame did not seem to care much. Naruto, teach your brother how to gather his chakra. I am Ram going to go find some notes for him. It was obvious their father was quickly getting frustrated by the incompetence his brother was radiating. As their father left, Jean quickly turned to his brother Bakaneru. Hurry up and give me the scroll. Naruto raised one eyebrow scroll. He asked, truly confused. Yes, the scroll where you learned how to use your chakra. Jean replied, annoyed. I do not understand Naruto was cut off by his twin stop bullshitting. There must be some secret technique you know or it would be impossible for you to be better than me. Though Naruto enjoyed seeing his twin complain how Naruto was better than him because of a scroll even though he did not have a thing like that. It was quickly getting annoying as well. Brother, for the fifth time this week, I do not have a secret technique scroll. Jean gritted his teeth. Fine if you don't want to help me then, maybe father can make you. With that, Jean pulled back his arm, and for some reason hit himself on the jaw as hard as his five-year-old arm could, which wasn't very hard, but strong enough to leave a slight bruising. Jean smirked and began loudly crying. Naruto widened his eyes as he figured out his plan. At once, and with a yellow flash, Minato was standing beside Jean. He started asking what was wrong and when he saw the bruise on his cheek, he demanded an answer from Naruto. The blonde was about to say Jean hit himself, when Jean started first. Naruto, he punched me when I asked him a question. And with the answer, he continued bawling in tears louder. Dad, I can ask he wasn't given a chance to finish when the Yandame slapped him in the face. Naruto accidentally bit his tongue and blood leaked out of the corner of his mouth. Insert Yandame's hateful lecture. I really can't stand writing that kind of stuff. After the long scolding from his father, Minato took Jean and decided to go to the courtyard to train for the rest of the day and switched off the lights to the dojo, ignoring Naruto who was still standing on the same spot as he was when being scolded. Tears threatened to leave his eyes as he nursed his red cheek. He clenched his fist and in a fit of anger, he punched the wall next to it. Several cracks appeared as his chakra-enhanced fist impacted against it. Naruto clenched his eyes shut, his hatred for Jean increasing another notch. Between his parents, Minato always favored Jean over him and Kushina did as well though more subtle with it. Deciding to forget about what had happened, he decided some muscle pains would be appropriate. He rushed to the leather punching bag filled with sand and began to rapidly land attacks on it. Punches and kicks, until his fists and knees had blisters. Tchiro's Brotchr. It was the first day of the academy, and Jean was clearly excited about it. The past few days, there have been nothing but praises and wishes to Jean. People walking by them and wished Jean good luck for the academy and praising him to be such a wonderful shinobi. It had been two years since the dojo incident. Jean suddenly found his method worked very well. Every time he hurt himself, Minato would hurt Naruto even more. Kushina always made Jin's favorite dishes as well. Only Jin's favorite dishes. 
Now, they were walking down the streets accompanied by the Yandame and his wife. Jean was standing between Minato and Kashina as they walked side by side to him, with Naruto trailing slightly behind them. Jean was wearing a yellow shirt with a dark green Kanoha symbol on the back, and cargo shorts that reached his calf with blue shinobi sandals. He had carried along a big bag with him, looking rather stupid in Naruto's opinion. Naruto himself only had a small ceiling scroll strapped to his waist. It was more convenient, lighter, and doesn't look as stupid as carrying a huge bag. As they continue heading to the academy, many villagers who passed by greeted the Yandame, Kushina and their hero son. Cheers along the streets. Naruto merely narrowed his eyes. When they reached the academy, it was slightly worse than Naruto thought. He wasn't a sociable person, and seeing the many children running towards the academy's front door made him worry a little. Immediately when they were close to the academy, Naruto could see some girls with hearts in their eyes as they stared lovingly at Jean. His brother was always the charmer, with his fame and all. Jean noticed them as well, but chose to ignore them and puffed up his chest. He loved the attention villagers threw at him. Though some would consider having a demon sealed in their belly, a curse, but Jean treated it as if it was a gift from God. He always bragged about how he saved the village, fucking self-centered douchebag. They reached the academy's reception and there the Yandame, and his wife parted with their son, wishing good luck. Naruto stood a few meters away, opting to observe the place he was going to study in for the next six years. It was relatively big, he thought. It had to be big to occupy so many students. There was at least 50 students in each level and not to mention the facilities like the dojo, training grounds, etc. The twins entered their first year classroom, and immediately all noise inside stopped. Everybody stopped what they were doing and stared at the twins. I meant, stared at Jean. After all, the legendary hero who defeated the QB was about to study in their class. Girls stared dreamily at him, while boys were just looking at him in awe and indifference. Jean walked to the second row, where an empty seat was stuck out like a sore thumb in the row of students. And he seated in it, began conversing with his neighbors. Naruto chose to seat at a more inconspicuous seat, at the back of the classroom. When he reached the last row, he noticed there was already a person in it, a sleeping boy with a pineapple-like haircut. Seating two seats from him, Naruto took out a book to read. It was titled Hai no Kuni, Bingo Book, Tichi Hiro's Biaro Tichiar. The next few years went by in a blink of an eye. As usual, Jean was praised for everything he did, even accidentally hitting an instructor's shoulder during kanai throwing practice. Great aim, they called it. How retarded was that? And, as usual, Naruto was always better than Jean. Heck, better than most students above their age, really. He had a full marks for all things. Ninjutsu, Taijutsu, weapons, etc. And he really had to think it was unfair when his grades were swapped with Jean. Every year, at the end of the year, his grades would be swapped with Jin's. Naruto would receive Jin's mediocre grades and Jean would receive the title of first in class. It was funny how the Hokage could abuse his authority with just a snap of his fingers. Nonetheless, Naruto thought of it as a compliment to him and an insult to Jean. Obviously, the boy can't do anything good himself and needed Naruto's grades to make himself look good. Pathetic he would often think. What was weird is that even though Naruto scored full marks in tests like accuracy with weapons or taijutsu in front of the class, they refused to accept Naruto as their better and continued to ridicule him for Jin's low marks. He would prove them wrong when he became Hokage. Yes, he wanted to be the Hokage. Not just for his desire for recognition, nor the multiple perks of that title, no. He wanted to change the village. Change the world. Naruto had some dark desires in his heart that no one knew about no one will know about. He will show the village. He will cleanse this corrupt world, filled with lies and filthy sins. Then, perhaps he would soon be recognized as the better of the twins, not just as the hero's brother. Happy birthday, kid! A man with a mane of unruly white hair shouted as he ruffled Jin's hair affectionately. Arigato, Erosenin. The Jinchuriki replied happily. It was Jin's birthday, no, it was their birthday. Yet he had only received a single happy birthday from the Sandame, and that was only after he forgotten his present when he bought a set of limited edition camo weapons set for Jin. It's basically Kanai and Shuriken in camo paint. Naruto stood in the corner of the living room as a dozen of people went over to Jin and wished him a happy birthday and giving him birthday presents. The room was packed full of over a hundred people, but Minato was by no means mediocre, and his living room could pack double that amount of people. More than a hundred presents wrapped in shiny wrapping paper and ribbons were piled on a table and floor. Naruto stared at the presents, green in envy. The guests then began to leave, except for those close to Jean or his parents. Jean ran to the presents and using his new camo kanai, began to rip the wrapping paper. Naruto was disgusted at his use of such a precious weapon as a simple paper cutter. The first present he opened was from the white eyes as Jean had loudly proclaimed. It was a scroll on advanced chakra control. Jean almost laughed at the present. Who needs chakra control when I have them in spades? He mocked before throwing it somewhere. Naruto reminded himself to borrow that from his dear brother. Next was from the Shikas, a close friend to Minato. Inside was a folded chess board with pieces made from ivory of an elephant, and its black pieces made of ebony. Again, he threw it over his head again, landing on the Huga scroll. Third was from Hataki Kakashi, 
Minato's student from the time when he was a Jounin sensei. It was a face mask, much like his own. It acted like a choker that you had to wear around your neck, and when needed, to be pulled up. This one Jean liked as it made him look like Kakashi Nizan. He sort of idolized the copy ninja of Konoha when growing up. It is strange to see Jean idolize another human being other than himself. Naruto turned away and exited the room. He could not bear continuing watching. It hurt. Though he and his brother had different status, but that alone should not determine their integrity and human worth. Why is the world so damn unfair? When Jean received cheers, he would receive curses. When Jean received praise, he would receive pain. Why? A thud was made as Naruto scored another bullseye on tree. A kunai was buried halfway up the blade. The blonde picked up another kunai, but this time he enhanced the kunai's attributes with his wind chakra. He threw it at another target, this time a rock. It pierced the rock, burying it up to the hilt. After two years in the academy, he had borrowed a chakra element training scroll from his father's vast library. It was often in use, fortunately for Naruto as he could sneak in oh so often and swipe some scrolls off the shelves. Jean was never a reader, he preferred hands-on practice even though he never was any good. As he continued throwing kunais after kunais at trees or rocks, he suddenly felt the presence behind him. He swiftly turned and a kunai flew and embedded itself at a tree beside the stalker. The person widened their eyes. But Naruto recognized the person. Oh, it's you. The figure walked out of the shadows. With raven black hair and the easily recognized obsidian eyes, the ever-memorable Uchiha clan symbol on his shirt, Itachi appears. What do you want? Naruto asked harshly as he returned to flicking kanais and shurikens. HNN, you are angry Itachi commented. The fury could be seen behind Naruto's unmoving face. The blonde narrowed his eyes. What do you want? He shouted, this time pumping too much chakra in his kanai and a small explosion occurred when his kanai hit a rock. Why the anger? And I came all the way here to give you a birthday present too. Naruto lifted an eyebrow. Present? The blonde may not think like a ten-year-old, but he is still a kid. The mention of a birthday present intrigued and excited him. Itachi flicked out something and threw it at Naruto. The blonde caught it of course. The present was two beautifully crafted butterfly knives. Google for image. It was an enchanting silver with its blades longer than a normal butterfly knife. Naruto immediately opened his mouth in a woe. And began doing tricks with them. Flipping the blade out and flipping it in. The blade and handle are made from carbon steel. For lightweight maneuvering. Hope you like it. Itachi finished with a small smile. Naruto regained his composure and returned the knife to its handle. Thanks. He merely said. Itachi turned around and began to walk off. Naruto, my offer still stands. I am doing it tomorrow, you know where to meet me. He declared. The blonde narrowed his eyes, staring at the butterfly knives. Itachi, how are you so sure I won't tell people what you will do? The Uchiha turned his head towards Naruto because I know you hold no loyalty to either this village nor your father. And with that, the 15-year-old AMBU captain shun shined away. Gripping the butterfly knife, he flipped out the blade and with a flick of his wrist, it flew towards the rock, burrowing in. What am I supposed to do? Why does a 10-year-old has so much responsibilities? Two days later, everything was a disaster. Chaos roamed in the streets of Kanoha. Everyone was in an uproar about a single issue. The complete and total massacre of the Uchiha clan. I say complete because Sasuke is dead as well. Fucking prick. Not a single Uchiha was left alive well, except for the person who performed the killings. Uchiha Itachi. The young ANBU captain and prodigy of the Uchiha clan. Of course, he escaped, not before running into two ANBUs on patrol while walking calmly on the streets of Kanoha, covered in blood and tanto unsheathed, also gleaming in the crimson liquid of life. After a thorough investigation, the Yandame declared the young prodigy insane, and was not under the right mind when performing the massacre, which concluded the whole investigation. No motive of murder, no investigation of weapons used, no nothing. Of course, the public ate it all up like some naive puppies following its master, Minato. However Naruto knew better. Itachi had told him days before the actual massacre. There was one and only motive. Besides the deep hatred Itachi possessed towards his own clan, he merely wanted to test himself. To reach the tip of his capability. To see how we would fare against his own kinsmen. Naruto's absence that night meant his rejection of joining Itachi in the murder of his clansmen. Although the ten-year-old blonde despised his village, did not mean he was evil. Massacring hundreds of people for no particular reason did not appeal to Naruto. Now, the people were wondering which clan would go next. Surely, after the complete destruction of their strongest clan, another was bound to be massacred. In the academy, everyone was talking in loud whispers within their own group. Many were with King Jean for information, after all being the Hokage's son had that advantage. Idiots. So drunk on peace that they never saw this coming. A simple clan disappearing off the face of earth caused such a commotion. They are in a shinobi village for crying out loud. They should be prepared for this. Currently, Naruto was situated in his usual seat in the academy's classroom, flipping out his butterfly knives blade and returning it to its handle. This village is pretty pathetic. The students here are also weak. How I wish Kiri's academy system replaced this pathetic Kanoha academy curriculum. I could hurt Jean so easily then. 
The door suddenly opened and a chunin with a scar across his face and over his nose walked in. Class settled down. He simply said and the whispers vanished. As most of you may have known by now, the Uchiha clan is he hesitated, trying to find a good word. Now no more. And that includes your classmate Sasuke. At that, multiple girls in the room started tearing up and one of the more hardcore Sasuke fans began bawling and crying her lungs out. Some pink-haired girl he never bothered to learn the name of. I know all of you are having a hard time adjusting. He stopped for a moment, glancing at the pink-haired girl. But we all have to move on. At that, a hand was raised among the seated students what happened? Was the curious question asked by an Aburame, his name who he did not seem to remember as well. That is classified information. But I doubt it would be for long. But I still can't tell you. After the fiasco in the classroom, the scarred Chunin gave them the day off, for some of them to adapt to the class with one student missing. The Blonde War A. Academy was released early, Naruto walked through Konoha's forest, enjoying the peace and tranquility. When he looked like he suddenly remembered something, he headed back to the village, and arrived at the ANBU headquarters. He approached the reception desk and found it not to be the dark and creepy place he thought it would be. It actually had an average look to it. Naruto smirked, God knows what was within these walls. When he asked for the last edition of the bingo book, the reception girl asked for his identity and rank. After pointing out his status as an academy student, the woman asked him to go back to mommy as kindly put it. But after mentioning his father, that changed the situation. She was more than glad to present him a mint copy of the latest bingo book. Naruto smirked after receiving it and thanked her, eagerly flipping through the pages. After all, he would have to know any person or thing that is perceived as a threat outside the safe walls of Konoha. He stopped dead in his tracks after flipping to the end section. On one of the pages of the bingo book was a picture of a blonde shinobi, whose sun-kissed hair reached shoulder length. Had a pair of sapphire blue eyes that radiated skill and strength. Namikaze Minato he read further down, catching the tiniest of details. Name, Namikaze Minato. Affiliation, Kanahigaku no Sado. Rank, Hokage. Status, SS rank, flee on sight. Description, age between 20 to 30, blonde hair, blue eyes, 6 feet 10 inches. No more information is available. Bounty, 200 million ryo, placed by Iwagakure. 100 million ryo, placed by Kumogakure. Known skills, extremely skilled in Fuinjutsu. Kaiga level ninjutsu. Kaiga level taijutsu. Jounin level genjutsu. Other attributes, unknown, known jutsus. Multiple self-created jutsus. High level futon jutsus. High level right on jutsus. High level ninpu. Ninpu as in, Kaiga bunshin, shunshin, etc. Other jutsus unknown. Naruto stopped reading. After knowledge of his father's place in the bingo book and status was more than enough to conclude one thing. His father was a monster, a true genius in the ninja arts. The third to receive SS rank in history. The first and second being Hashirama Senju and Uchiha Madara. He then remembered Itachi and flipped to the U section. Uchiha Baisuk, Uchiha Genshiru, Uchiha Galamaha found it. Uchiha Itachi, a picture of a raven-haired teen with black onyx eyes Uchiha Itachi. Name, Uchiha Itachi. Affiliation. Kanahigaku no Sado. Rank, Umbu Captain, Missing Mean. Status, S Rank, Flea on Sight. Description, Age 15 Black Hair, Black Eyes, Red with 3 Tomo if Sharingan Activated, 6 Feet 5 Inches No More Information is Available. Bounty, 80 Million, Placed by Kanahigaku. Known Skills, High Jounin Level Ninjutsu. Kaiga Level Genjutsu. Jounin Level Taijutsu. Mastery of Dijutsu, Sharingan. Jounin Level Weapons Mastery. Other Attributes Unknown. Known Jutsus. High Level Katan Jutsus. Intermediate level Ninpu. Other Jutsus unknown. Criminal act. Massacring the entirety of Kanahagakur's Uchiha clan. Naruto stopped reading and sighed. They really included Itachi's name, eh? That was quick, considering the massacre only occurred two days ago. Time skipped to second day of the last year of Academy. Iruka was babbling on about some boring stuff on the history of the elemental countries or something. Naruto wasn't paying much attention. He was now donning a black vest with holsters and a blood red shirt beneath. The vest contained thin metal plates within its fabric, for extra protection. Below, he wore a long pair of khaki pants with multiple holsters and pockets as well, and a pair of black steel-toed military combat boots. His two butterfly knives sheathed on a belt behind his waist. He was seated on the top left corner of the class, nearest to the windows. He looked out, and stared at the blue sky and green leaves and reminiscence about the past few years. It had been three years since the Uchiha massacre, and the scar left on the village have not been forgotten. After all the loss of their strongest clan, which, by the way could not even fend off an attack from a single shinobi, hurt the village a lot. Sarcasm aside, the Uchihas were actually a crucial part of the village's security and economy. They alone purchased 20% of most ninja weapons and daily necessities. They formed up to 85% of the Konoha military police force. They were promptly disbanded as there was simply not enough people, not to mention their eyes. All that it came down to was their eyes. Their precious, mightier than now Sharingan eyes. Losing them was a huge setback to Konoha's shinobi forces. It was their Dijitsu that other countries feared. The Sharingan, 
as infamous as the clan that possessed it, was truly one of the most deadly tool in the shinobi world. It was after all, their eyes that led the Uchiha to be one of the strongest clans during the warring clan period. Then again, some people were glad and pleased the Uchiha were gone. They were the Hyuga, the rival of the Uchiha clan. They fuck, this is getting boring, not going to do the whole clan war's history. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward there we go. Over the years, the few things that did not change in Naruto's eyes, were the obvious favoritism towards his brother. Everyone loved him. And I mean everyone. There was simply no wrong in him. Not a single evil bone within his body. His ego was being stroked every single minute in this village. His arrogance growing every time someone praised him even for doing absolutely nothing but living. His ego was so out of whack that it would do whatever it can to protect himself. Jin's messed up ego can do these mental gymnastics to convince himself he is awesome, when really he's just a douchebag. And the worst part, everyone is buying it, from South Park, my favorite American cartoon. Which I do not own DH. It angered Naruto just thinking about it. Oh yeah, the Yandame had been continuing for the past six fucking years. Swapping Jin's grades with his, made him like the freaking dead last. And the worst part? He couldn't do a single shit about it. He could reveal it to the village with undisputed evidence. But his father have had the village so brainwashed, they would believe anything he says. Who would the village believe? His father, Kanoha's hero and Yandame Hokage, or his lesser known, Shady Son? He would sooner be crucified by the villagers than do any lasting damage on his father's reputation in his propaganda-filled village. But if there was one good trait in Namike's Naruto, was his endurance and willpower. Endure just endure this he would tell himself as he clenched his fist in anger and grit his teeth in rage. Naruto would take his anger out on the training grounds surrounding the village, practicing jutsu after jutsu, utilizing his chakra elemental affinity to the maximum. Oh yes, he discovered his elemental affinity when he was eleven. A year after the massacre, after reading tales of legendary shinobi around the globe he quickly noticed that each ninja specialized in a specific element, or elements. After discovering the existence of elemental chakra affinities, he quickly learned high-ranked jutsus of his elements, being wind, lightning and fire. A strange combination, in fact a very rare one. Like his father, he possessed wind and lightning, and from his mother, his fire affinity. To date, he knows of more than 20 B-ranked jutsus, 10 A-ranked jutsus containing all three elements, and a single S-ranked wind jutsu he borrowed from his father's private jutsu library. Wait, he had two years yet he only learned less than 50 jutsus? That's impossible, Naruto's and other stories could learn more than 100 of jutsus in a single year. Is what you might think but my Naruto does not learn jutsus he masters them. He understands the jutsu, he picks it apart, and after studying the dissected technique, he puts it back together and make it even stronger. The person who taught him this concept of mastering jutsus and not learning them was the only person he could relate to, Uchiha Itachi. Not Yaoi thanks. Speaking of the onyx eyed traitor, he still had his present. His simply exquisite pair of butterfly knives. He had been practicing with them for two years. Naruto at first was only able to flip it out and flip it in in two seconds. But after practicing, he could now do those simple actions in less than a second. It was hard, he had to admit. Every fine detail of the knife was a crucial part to the entire weapon. The pivot pins was oiled once a week. The edge was regularly sharpened and the handle polished. The latch, which was used for locking the knife and holding it closed, was replaced with a seal that utilized the mental command from Naruto while he held the knife to lock or unlock it. But the most changed to the knives were the kanji he had carved on the blade. A small kanji for Itachi, on the left blade, to remind him of the first person who gave him his first present. And the kanji for Sin, on the right blade, to remind him of the first sin dealt to him by the villagers and his family. After years of practicing, he noticed the knife could channel chakra as well. Well, all weapons can channel chakra, but somehow the butterfly knives was able to purify the chakra channeled, shaping it to have a sharp edge and then surrounding the blade itself. Naruto wondered whether Itachi knew of this. Bah, who is he kidding? Itachi would not give a mundane a gift as regular butterfly knives. In conclusion, it was an average three years for Naruto which brings us to now. Jean was, as usual, surrounded by half the class and all the girls in the student population. Bah, fangirls nothing but delusional, hormonal little harpies. They had no idea who Jean was, yet claimed to be his one true love, and actually thought that he secretly loves me but is too shy to admit it. There is no bigger bullshit. They were unbelievable, and like Jean, they believed he was the best, he was awesome when it is so painfully obvious he is a little. Naruto could still remember that day, it was a few months ago. During a taijutsu-only spar, the teacher in charge put Naruto against Jean, in hopes of the hero showing off his skills to his dead last brother. But boy was he wrong when Naruto simply sidestepped and tripped Jean with his feet when said boy rushed towards him, throwing a wild punch. Naruto laughed mentally as he remembered what happened. When Jean was running towards Naruto, all the girls was going kick his ass. Or Jean you are so cool, and even let me have your babies. From one girl who actually wore an I love Jean t-shirt. And when he tripped him with a slight movement from his feet, they all jeered and booed, screaming for Naruto's head, 
saying he cheated and it was not possible Jean lost, though it had already happened fifteen times that month? Naruto did not bother counting the number of times he kicked his brother's ass. Yet how he still acted like a pompous ass was beyond Naruto. He smirked at Jin's direction, thinking of his bruised face from the last time Naruto punched him during their taijutsu spar. Tired of the same old routine which included Jin running at Naruto, every single time, Naruto tripping Jin, every single time, and everyone shouting he cheated, every single time. Somehow, Jin caught Naruto looking at him, and for some insignificant reason decided to walk over to Naruto, with his little gang following him. Hey dope Jin started, smirking. The rest behind him laughing and some spotted the same smirk as Jean. Naruto closed his eyes, sighed heavily and looked back at Jean. What do you want, brother? Jean looked angry at that dobe, don't call me brother, you don't deserve me as your brother. Naruto merely continued staring at him with indifference. His brother narrowed his eyes stop looking at me, he demanded and Naruto, simply hoping he would just leave and stop bothering him, complied. He looked directly in front seemingly ignoring Jean. Now Jean was getting frustrated. Don't ignore me useless dead last. Naruto sighed, and looked back, with his cold empty eyes, emotionless face and dull facial expression. Jean growled, surprising those around him. Why you dope deed at last? Don't you give me that look, you useless waste of space. He stuttered and shouted in anger. Seeing his little outburst had no effect, he decided to taunt and provoke Naruto, knowing he could not do anything no, knowing that his father would make sure Naruto could not do anything. TCH, hey, you guys know why this piece of trash is the dead last? He asked the people behind. Cause he's useless? Because he is an idiot? Because he is retarded? Several suggestions shot out. Jean shook his head no it's because Naruto doesn't have a mommy and daddy do you? He mock cried at the end. Naruto raised an eyebrow at that. This was new. You may be my brother, Jean started but you sure ain't my parents son. You must be fucking adopted. Naruto narrowed his eyes. What was his brother going on about now? Seeing his brother's eyes narrow, Jean knew this was working. He continued you heard me. You are so useless, the Yandame Hokage can't be your father. After all a dead last like you could never have received the genes of the world's strongest shinobi ever. That's dumb. Naruto was not one who would be hurt by words. He did not know why being told he did not belong hurt him so much. He silently clenched his fist in anger, wishing Jean would not provoke him further or Naruto would do something he might regret. Jean did now miss his brother clenching his fist. He knew his provocation was working, and he stupidly decided to taunt him further. Yeah you heard me, trash. You are nothing. You don't belong here. You don't belong in this village. You don't belong in my elite family, you dead last. Jean shouted almost manically. Naruto accidentally released his killing intent for a split second. And at that split second it was the first time Jean truly felt death staring straight at him. And ironically, Naruto was staring straight at Jean, his eyes colder than the icy embrace of death. Naruto immediately calmed down. Funny you would say that, especially when you yourself know why I am the dead last and why you are the top in class last year, no in every year. He said calmly. Jean took a moment to register Naruto's sentence, and smirked that's because I am a genius, and you are a retard. He shouted laughter ensuing. Naruto laughed. And how per se, did I how you say kick your ass in every sparring match? He asked mockingly. Jean immediately replied I know you cheated in every match, dead last. Naruto rolled his eyes you yourself know very well you are the top in class because father, the Yandame Hokage swapped your grades with mine. Me receiving your shitty scores dead last Jean narrowed his eyes in anger. You call me the dead last, you trash. He shouted and threw a rather flimsy punch. Naruto's head went through at least a dozen different ways to break Jin's arm without anyone even noticing, but decided against it. Instead, he merely turned his neck, letting Jin's slow fist fly past his head, an inch from his cheeks. More punches came from Jin with Naruto dodging all of them without even moving from his seat. I won't hurt you Jin. You know that. Father would murder me if you ran to him crying. Naruto said, as Jin started his barrage of wild and flimsy punches again. One boy at the back commented on Naruto's statement. You won't hurt him because you are too weak. Naruto recognized that rough and unruly voice. It belonged to the Inazuka heir Kiba. Tired of this little fiasco, Naruto used an advanced version of Kawarini he created as a variation of the original technique and switched places with Kiba, letting Kiba be hit by his brother's attacks. Only when Jin noticed, the person he was hitting had brown hair instead of his brother's sun-kissed blonde, he stopped. When Jin had actually stopped, Kiba already spotted several bruises. Normally, any sane student would stand up and punch Jin back. But from his father's influences, no one, I mean no one dared to hurt Jean, or say anything about his tyrannic ways. I don't believe regular Kawarimi can be used to actually substitute with as large a living thing as a human. A rabbit maybe, as shown with Sabuza. Coward, you used another person as your scapegoat? Jean shouted. By now, the boys were chanting fight, 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 whereas the girls were chanting kick his ass and similar other phrases. Naruto merely stood in apathy, looking at the scene with nothing but cold, indifference, ignoring and drowning out the masses cheering and jeering. Once Jean spotted his brother, he performed several hand seals and clapped his hands together futon, ripusho, 
He shouted out and despite the many students in front of him, he pushed forward with his wind chakra enhanced palm attack, knocking several students off their feet. As he headed towards Naruto, said Blonde narrowed his eyes and with a swift flick of his arm, he gripped Jin's wrist, the wind chakra floating harmlessly around his outstretched palm. Weak Naruto muttered and after the chakra dissipated, he pushed the hand away and walked off. Damn it Jin growled don't try to run away, Baka Naruto. His brother looked back. Fuck off, Jin he simply said before heading to the door. But the door opened in front of him and Iraka stared surprised at Naruto. Class is starting, Namike-san. Where are you going? The scar-faced Chunin asked. Naruto looked back, glancing at Jin and his groupies before answering TCH he pushed Iraka out of the way and walked out. It was near sunset when Naruto returned home. Where he was the whole day was a mystery. The moment Naruto stepped into the rather large mansion, he met his mother, as if she was waiting for him. Mother. He greeted and continued walking, but was stopped by Kushina. And where have you been, Naruto? She asked, anger's obvious presence in her voice. Out. Naruto merely answered. Kushina narrowed her eyes. Your brother told me you skipped school today. His brother, eh? Yeah, he replied. Why did you skip school? Even if you're the dead last of your class, you should moreover work harder, right? She demanded. Naruto closed his eyes in silent anger. Funny how everyone thought he was a dead last. Naruto was about to answer when an actual Raisingan almost hit his face if he had not Kawarimi with a vase lying somewhere. Growling, he searched for the attacker, only to see the cold blue eyes of his father. Minato, why did you do that? Kushina asked, more curiosity than anger. Minato narrowed his eyes in rage that little dip shit hurt our son. The red-haired Uzumaki Shinobi widened her eyes in shock before narrowing them at Naruto. Why, why do you like hurting your brother Naruto? She shouted. Even if he is the top of your class, there is no reason to be jealous and attack your brother. You should be glad, Jean doesn't hit you back. Kushina yelled at Naruto, again and again. Seeing Naruto's silence, Minato took it to offense and charged up another Raisingan, albeit only at the first stage. Where the Raisingan only has a spiral attack but no power, Naruto recognized the incomplete Raisingan, and when Minato attacked him with it, Naruto did the only thing he learned all these years. Just endure the spiraling orb smashed into Naruto's gut. Sending him out of the front door, landing outside. Blood dripped out of Naruto's mouth, though it was only at its first stage, but in the hands of the true master of the shinobi arts like Minato, it was incredibly deadly. The blonde-haired academy student lay on the ground, nursing his wound, noting his shredded shirt. And don't even think about coming back, you little bastard. He screamed at Naruto and slammed the door, leaving an injured Naruto outside. Said blonde stood up gently, trying to avoid any more damage to his body. Are you okay? Naruto widened his eyes, and jumped back pulling out a kanai at the same time, only to see a middle-aged man standing where he stood. Naruto recognized him. Bandages covered half his body. Only his left eye and lower face was shown. A cross-shaped scar donning his chin, and a black sling held his supposedly crippled right arm. What do you want Danzo? What do you want Danzo? The question hung in the air in an awkward silence. Danzo turned towards Naruto. I merely wanted to know if you were okay, the old warhawk replied. There's nothing for you to concern yourself about. I am perfectly fine. Naruto coldly stated. He had heard of Danzo, a warhawk who wants Konoha to reign supreme over all other shinobi villages through war and battle. The last time he heard of him was from his father telling Jean to be careful of him. Seemed that Danzo really wanted Jean to become a living weapon for the village. Are you sure? That injury of yours looks rather serious. The ex-root commander asked and walked towards Naruto. Gritting his teeth, Naruto threw the kanai in front of Danzo, not a step closer. The blonde warned. Danzo was angered by the blatant disrespect the brat showed him but through years of training, he managed to calm himself down without revealing his disdain towards the kid. I know what happened, Naruto Kun. He began, said Blonde widened his eyes, but tightened his grip on another kanai he pulled out. Aren't you angry look at what your father did to you? Danzo continued, I know you dislike him. I know you hate them. Naruto looked at the injury on his stomach. A red scorch-like mark on his gut, his eyes almost watering. Not at the pain but the fact his father would actually attack him. Danzo knew he got Naruto at that and continued help me, help you. Naruto lowered his kanai, and the war hawk took a few steps forward, a meter away from the blonde. Join me. Naruto closed his eyes Danzo Ippen Shinde Miru? He whispered, releasing his entire killing intent accumulated during the entire event, and releasing his chakra pressure. Only now, Danzo realized how fearsome was this 13-year-old academy student. Naruto was no fool. He knew the risk of provoking Danzo like that. He was in fact an ANBU commander, albeit retired. But still, he continued, Do you believe me to be stupid? If you do, then you are no better than the rest of the idiots in this village. I will not assist you in your pathetic attempt at ruling this village. Naruto shouted. Danzo narrowed his eyes, seething in anger. Do not mock me, boy. I can easily snap you in two like a toothpick if I choose to. Naruto narrowed his eyes in return and do not assume you know me, Danzo. Do not even think for a second you understand me. 
and never try to fool me again, or I will hunt you down, Danzo I will hunt you down and gut you. Namike's Naruto is no one's slave, Naruto screamed, glaring at the other with all the rage he could muster, said Shinobi recoiled at his threat this is not over brat. No, this is far from over. He threatened and promptly disappeared. At his disappearance, Naruto let out a breath he did not even know was there. Sweat matted his brows. That was close. Very close. Danzo could have killed him right there. The only reason he did not do so was because Minato might have come out angry that Danzo was going to stain the house's front steps. The blonde student kept his kunais. Glancing back at the house, he decided to stay out for the night. Let the folks cool down. They always do. His parents would either forgive him or forget about the whole incident altogether. Most likely the latter. Looking at his supply pouch, he noticed his ninja tools were running low so Naruto decided to pay the local ninja weapons shop a visit. Walking down the streets, he noticed it was much quieter than when he walked with his brother. When walking along with Jean, there would be whispers, greetings and he always had to stop every minute for some random person to shake hands with Jean, said Jinchiriki of course relishing in the attention. Now, the people did not notice him. To them he was just another person on the streets. Naruto found it to be refreshing. Away from all the noise, something caught his eyes though. It was a jutsu shop. Curious he had never known there was a shop selling jutsus. Walking in, he found it to be quite spacious, though its shelves neatly contained jutsus, categorized according to rank, type and element. It was filled with customers as well. From academy students, to Jown and even, all looking at the many technique scrolls. Amusing himself, he Naruto decided to explore the newly found store. Walking towards the fire jutsu section, he found several basic techniques only, much to Naruto's distaste. Katan and in Katan, Kakaku the highest he saw was only a Katan, Ryuka. How disappointing. Though none of it was good, it was fun to see so many different techniques, even if many of them were absolutely useless. Then Naruto reached the Taijutsu section. It was a small section, it only contained less than a dozen styles. Some of them even more useless than the Academy's style. Well, Naruto did not need any of the styles here though. He already had the Five Elements style. The Five Elements style contained five different variations of it. Each named after one of the five elements, fire, water, wind, earth, and lightning. Each required a specific style of fighting. The fire stance used strong barrages of attacks that kept the enemy busy in order to deliver a powerful and fatal attack when a chance was given. The water stance used fluid and flexible motions to flow around the opponent's attack, using their own force against them. The earth stance used rigid and heavy defense which led to the attacker more hurt than the user. The wind stance used constant movement around the enemy to deliver swift punches and jabs. The opponent would most likely wear themselves out before the user needed to strike the final blow. The lightning stance used quick, precise and fatal strikes to a single area leaving the opponent either in a whole lot of pain or heavily injured. Out of these five, Naruto only managed to master the wind stance. He had the basics of the lightning stance down and a brief knowledge of the fire stance. End of Taijutsu explanation. Now where was I? Yes, Naruto left the store and headed towards the weapon shop, deciding not to be distracted after noticing night nearing. When he reached the weapon shop, he was glad to still see other customers as well. After browsing through the shop's stock, he noticed the weapons were of rather low quality. But fair enough, its price was ridiculously low. It was as if they were made for simple distraction and traps. Now the higher quality weapons were at the back. He picked up a shuriken. Felt the edge and waited on its hands. Now this was a weapon. A few more adjustments and the shuriken could be used to end lives. Among the pile of randomly stacked weapons, he took a decent amount of what he needed and put it in the basket he picked up after entering. As Naruto headed further in, his eyes being to widen considerably. This place was where the highest of the highest quality weapons they had stocked. He picked up a kunai. Its weight was incredibly light, but the metal glinted in the light, promising pain if he were to touch the edge. This kunai was most like used for throwing. Naruto picked up another kunai. This one was heavier, and the blade was longer than the other. This was used for melee combat. How he wanted these weapons but knowing the little allowance his parents gave him, he could only afford what he had in his basket now. Then an idea struck him. A dozen different scenarios ran through his head. Five plans formed, thirty over possible outcomes perceived. Naruto smiled. Tonight would be exciting. Night came and beams of moonlight broke the heavily clouded sky. Naruto stood on a tree observing the store. The store owner, a burly blacksmith, closed the shop and headed home for the night. The blonde looked around. What he was about to do was dangerous. Silently, he crept towards the back door and pressed his back towards the wall. Cautiously, he gripped the doorknob. Sending chakra into the doorknob, it melted because of the fire elemental chakra. The door losing its lock opened. Naruto crept it, but heard thunk thunk sounds. As if someone was practicing throwing. The blonde took a few seconds what the just thought. Someone was here. Naruto started panicking, before pulling himself together. Looking at the door's melted doorknob, he realized there was no way out of this. He was in too deep, and the only way out was with the weapons Naruto was here for. Hardening his eyes, he headed towards the front of the store, where the weapons were kept. 
There they were, black metal almost camouflaging in the dark. He picked up one of them and started examining it. Yes, this was the one he wanted. He slowly took several of them and sealed them in a storage scroll he always carried with him. But a sudden shout interrupted him. Who's there? Naruto widened his eyes. He turned towards where the voice came from and saw a girl. Older than him but not by much. She wore a pink, sleeveless Chinese-style shirt and green pants. Her brown hair was tied up in a bun and the Kanoha Shinobi headband on her forehead. Then he recognized her, a senpai in the academy. A year older than him and graduated. Why was she here? Don't tell me her father owned this place. Who's there? She repeated. She saw my face. Oh no, oh shit. Oh crap she cannot tell anyone. Naruto stood up. And walked out of the darkness. She will not tell anyone Naruto swiped out his butterfly knife and flipped out the blade. Before reappearing behind the girl. Knife in her throat. Shock and surprise on her face as the girl fell down. Blood gushing out of the open wound as Naruto ripped out the knife. No sound was made and after staring at the bloody body for a minute, Naruto finally realized what he had done. He collapsed, kneeling down. Naruto's legs no longer able to support himself. His eyes widened and mouth agaki, only survival instincts keeping him from yelling in shock and fear. Naruto glanced at the bloody knife and back at the body. Realization kicking in. He took a life. He stabbed her throat. That night, Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto for the first time in his life, killed. Morning arrived. Naruto had been so in shock he did not even take what he came for and left. He returned to the family's mansion and entered the house. Kushina was already up making breakfast for the family, and Naruto merely walked by her. She saw him but didn't say anything. She must have forgotten. The blonde entered his room. Still shocked at what happened last night. He killed a person. Killed and strangely, he felt no regret. In fact, a small, tiny part of him enjoyed it. Enjoyed the sound when his blade entered his victim and the satisfaction of killing. Naruto took out his butterfly knife, still stained with last night's blood. He quickly wiped the blood off. No one must know. That morning, Jean and Naruto went to the academy as usual. His brother had acted as if nothing had happened. Naruto was content with that. The last thing he needed was Jean all in his face about yesterday. As usual, villagers came and shook his hand, greeting Jean. Aforementioned Jinchuriki grinning in pride, arrogance, and the same higher than now look on his face. They reached the academy on time though, despite the many distractions along the way. And like every other morning, Jean sat at the right side of the academy, and Naruto on the top left. His brother was still surrounded by dozens of students, and Naruto was still seated alone, when something caught his eyes. The dark, slightly violet hair. The pale creamy skin. The white, almost pupil-less eyes. Hyuga Hinata. The one person, Naruto actually liked in the whole village. No, not like. More like he had a crush on her. Naruto blushed at the thought of his crush. Anyways, as she entered the classroom, Hinata noticed something. The love of her life Jean, that's right. As hard as it was for Naruto to admit, Hinata simply adored Jean. The look in Hinata's eyes whenever she caught a glance at him, the blush that laced her cheeks every time Jean looked at her. Naruto hated it. Why? Why did the only person he liked had to love the pampered little bastard that was his brother? That really hurt him, knowing how his crush loved his most hated person. The heartbreak he felt when he learned of this, was almost unbearable. But he coped. Life was not fair. That was what he learned after 13 years of living in this shithole village. Hinata walked to Jean, still blushing and stuttering as she talked to him. Jean caught Naruto's glance at Hinata. Oh, he knew. His brother knew about Naruto's little crush. That was why, at every chance he got, he would do this. Jean got up and suddenly hugged Hinata. Whispering in her ears hug me said Hyuga would blush and hug him back, content. Naruto would grit his teeth in silent anger. It was moments like these that made him contemplate just killing his brother and be done with it. But his instinct for survival overwhelmed his desire to end his brother's life. The girls watched in envy as Jean embraced Hinata, while the boys looked in jealousy. Aforementioned Hyuga was the cream of the crop one might say, the girl most desired in the class. She was pure. Unlike the other skanks, her only undoing was her moronic crush on Jean. One might call her stupidly in love. Class quickly went on for the day without his brother further provoking or taunting Naruto. Having learnt the lesson a day ago, the year passed by faster than Naruto expected. No more incidents occurred. Though his brother had continued insulting Naruto at every moment possible, the blonde had learned to just ignore Jean. Naruto learned a dozen more jutsus, this time a few B ranks and the rest C ranks. Why the sudden decrease in quality of his jutsus? Well, since Jean was hurt by Naruto that day, his brother demanded to learn stronger jutsus. So the Yandame and Jean spent more time in the jutsu library's more diverse section, leaving Naruto only able to roam around the lesser of the library. But even with the incredibly detailed jutsu scrolls, Jean had only managed to learn a single A rank jutsu, which was his father's Raisin but the little prick only managed to get past the first step after three months. That was almost laughable. And all in all it took him more than eight months to even form a complete Raisin Gan. 
Despite his father's constant tutoring and information, Jean was not even able to form the Raisingan without two Kage Bunshins by his side to stabilize his chaotic Raisingan. Jean was not able to completely control his Raisingan alone, as he simply skipped the last step after spending a month on it. He had no patience and after finding out he could try to control the technique with clones, he decided to go with that instead of actually learning to use the technique properly. Of course, once he finished it, everybody called him a genius. Who completed a technique, Naruto thought was useless after mastering it in a week, in eight months. But I am just going off topic. Now moving on. Today was the academy graduation day, which required them to pass a simple ninjutsu test. Now that might sound hard but snicker, they only needed to perform the three most basic jutsus in the entire history of jutsus ever. I am serious, the henge, kawarimi, and the actually lower than useless, bunshin, jin was first up. But after performing the three required jutsus, in which he barely made two bunshins that was slightly translucent, he requested for an extra test that required the student to perform their best jutsu. And of course, the teachers agreed. Jean, like his usual cocky self, he arrogantly called out his jutsu's name. Kaige Bunshin no jutsu. And two copies appeared in a poof, flanking him. Iruka clapped well done, Jean Kun. Said Prick smirked I am not done yet, Iruka sensei. Jean gripped his right wrist with his left hand, and his right palm cupped the air. The clones repeatedly hit the air on Jin's palm. And slowly, but surely, the familiar sphere of chakra formed within his hands. Jean Smirk then ran towards the wall raising Gan. He shouted and slammed the orb of chakra towards the wall. With a little BM, a crater found itself on the wall with a few cracks. Irika's mouth was agape, eyes widened. Everyone else in the class was the same. Except for Naruto, of course. He spotted so many mistakes with that technique. First off, it took too long. Twenty seconds approximately. With that much time he needed, the enemy would already be able to calmly walk towards Jean and slit his throat. Jean was also slow. Running towards the enemy with such a slow speed, would only result in the enemy using Kawarimi or some other escape jutsus. But the results were shocking to say the least. Though Naruto hated to admit it, Jean pulled off a perfect raisin gan. Albeit the method used was a little idiotic, but the end result was a powerful and destructive attack. Smirking at Naruto, he arrogantly yelled out beat that loser. At that everybody snickered, knowing that there was no way the dead last would be able to show Jean up. Naruto was actually going to just try to be as normal as can be. But when Jean taunted him like that, Naruto just wanted to shove Jin's own Raisingan right up his ass. But he was not going to do that. Instead, he would do this. Naruto reappeared in front of Jin. You asked for this, brother? Said Blonde smirked, and the familiar light gust appeared again. In a split second, a perfect Raisingan was floating an inch above his palm. Jin paled, shocked. H how? Naruto chuckled but did not reply. Let's see me beat that as you mentioned. Let me show you the one thing our father had never been able to do, adding an element to the Raisingan. Jin widened his eyes at that. Of course he had heard about adding an element to the Raisingan from his father. Minato mentioned that he could not for his life increase the Raisingan's power by including an element to it. And now, his brother, known for being the dead last, was going to do it, said Jinchuriki could not believe it. But he remained speechless. Naruto stared at his Raisingan, before a surge of chakra made its way to the Raisingan. Then, a second later, a thin thread-like ring formed around the Raisingan, and then another, and another. Before long, there was a dozen rings surrounding the Raisingan. The ring was spinning rapidly, like a saw, like an atom, but the except the central nucleus one sphere, it's bigger, and it's the Raisingan. The blonde started explaining what in the world he just did. This is one of my prototypes. I admit I have not finished the actual thing yet, but this may be the closest thing yet. Reaching calmly towards the wall, opposite of Jin's Raisingan ruined wall, he slowly made contact between the wall and the sphere. Before the whole class eyes, before the wall even touched the orb, it was ground into fine dust. It is hard to explain it in words, but from the way I visualize it, I assure you, it looks pretty fucking awesome. Before long, there was large smooth crater adorning the wall. Of course, it could be much more powerful, but I would not risk destroying the whole academy just to beat that as Jean put it. Everyone looked like the person from the painting the scream mouth the guppy, eyes shocked and surprised. But Jean looked on with contempt, pure hatred and disdain in his eyes. And Naruto did not realize the severity of his actions. The academy released the students early after the genin exam was completed. They had to collate the results and determine team assignments. Seeing nothing to do, Jean returned home together. Naruto not wanting to show his brother his training, went along with it, knowing that if Naruto said he was going to train, there was no doubt Jean would follow him. On the way home, Jean had to barely repress the cocky smirk on his face. Naruto unknowing of his brother's agenda. Once they reached the Namake's mansion, Jean immediately went off to find his father while Naruto went to his room in order to try to meditate. Meditation was a frequent hobby of Naruto's. It kept him calm and often cooled him down a particular agonizing event. He found meditation a simple yet complicated practice. It required a calm and even blank state of mind. Those that could not keep from thinking stuff were just left sitting there, not accomplishing much. 
A few minutes later, Naruto was in his room, finally settling into the calm and almost tranquility of his room. His room was simple, only containing very basic furniture, a bed, a study desk, a wardrobe and a bookshelf. On the windowsill was a simple bonsai tree he had cultivated since what happened four years ago. Okay, quick A slash in. In my timeline graduation is at 14. I kinda messed up the timeline I guess. If you had read my other stories, the age of graduation is always 13. The peaceful atmosphere was suddenly broken by his door being broken down. Naruto opened his eyes and was treated to a foot flying towards his face. He quickly rolled out of the way and stood up but a fist found its way to his gut. Minato glared fiercely at Naruto. His fist buried in the younger blonde's gut. Pure wrath down the Hokage's face, while Naruto was merely shocked and scared. He hoped this was not real, but the pain in his stomach told him it was. Sometimes, Naruto just really really hated this village. You used my jutsu and humiliated your brother in front of the whole class the fact that you stole my own technique angered me, but to show up your brother in front of his peers is unforgivable. The Yandame spat before another fist smashed Naruto's face. The newly graduated Genin glared at his father on the floor. His heavily bruised right cheek was swollen. His father could hit really hard, you little bastard. I believe it is time to teach you a fucking lesson in respecting your superiors Minato declared while cracking his knuckles. What he said translated into I am going to beat you up for disrespecting your brother. Naruto only closed his eyes before rains of attacks rained on his body. Ten minutes after, Minato left the room. His fist was covered in blood, though not a drop his own. Naruto lay on the flood, broken and battered. Bruises and cuts covered his entire body. His shirt had been ripped off by his father after said Hokage noticed thin metal plates in between the fabric. Why? Naruto whispered as his consciousness threatened to leave him. He weakly drew a rather complicated small squarish seal with his own blood on the floor. Naruto formed a serpent hand seal and focused a large amount of chakra in his hands. He then directed the chakra to the seal he drew and released a held breath as his wounds began to heal. Healing Resuscitation Regeneration Technique An A-ranked medical ninjutsu used during operations and surgery by medical shinobi. Normally, a larger seal is drawn and would take a longer time to heal but that's only with life-threatening wounds. Naruto breathed a sigh of relief as the pain that wrecked his entire body quickly vanished. After this entire body was healed, he released the chakra, with a slight pant. The jutsu normally required four people to conduct and hours to complete, but Naruto was naturally a chakra powerhouse, a genetic trait from his father, so only a few minutes was required, especially only for external wounds. Unknowingly, a tear fell from his eye. I don't know how much of this I can take I might really, really be tempted to follow Itachi's footsteps. Pulling himself together, he walked towards his wardrobe and pulled out of some clothes. Looking at this pants, he decided to change his blood-covered clothing. Naruto changed into a black shirt with a high collar, that had long sleeves on the left and regular sleeves on the right. He strapped a hidden blade holder on his left wrist, concealed by the long sleeve that covered his entire left arm. Hidden blade from Assassin's Creed. Those who played the game before would know how freaking badass it is. And a gray vest with multiple pockets on top. For his lower body, he wore a long pair of baggy khaki pants, also with many pockets. A black loose belt wrapped around his waist that had four pouches strapped on the back of the belt. The belt had a sort of magnetic attraction to his pants due to several seals so enemies would not be able to grab the belt. He also wore a comfortable pair of black, military combat boots. It was steel-toed and had a sleek cookery knife in his right boot. The cookery knife has a curved blade, mostly used close combat, or even as a throwing weapon. In the hands of a ninja, it can be severed as a decapitation tool, the curved knife providing easy cutting into the rounded neck of the victim. With a heavy sigh, Naruto decided to go train, just to forget what happened. The next day quickly arrived. On the way to the academy, Jean kept sending arrogant glances to Naruto, mocking him, as if asking him now do you know what happens when you mess with me? The blonde merely ignored his childish brother. Today was team assignments, and Naruto was not an expert in stealth for nothing. He snuck into his father's office and took a long glimpse at the list. He noted the people he paid special attention to. Team 7 included Namake's Jean, Abiram Shino and at the last name Naruto almost yelled out in anger. Hyuga Hinata. Sensei being Hataki Kakashi. Team 8 included Inazuka Kiba, Ino Yamanaka and Akimichi Chuji. Quite a reasonable team. Kiba was the tracker of the team. Ino, the information gatherer and capture specialist. Chuji the main assault and tank of the team. Their formation was, find, immobilize, crush. Sensei being Saratobi Asuma. Team 10 included Namike's Naruto, Nara Shikamaru and Kuregain Kagami. This team however, made no sense to Naruto. They probably piled anyone left over into this team. But Naruto was indifferent to his teammates, maybe slightly glad. Shikamaru wasn't bad. He could have gotten worse, of course. Besides, from what he had observed, Shikamaru was a genius nearing Naruto's caliber. Only his lack of motivation prevented him from soaring to high places. Kagami was not bad as well. Though not a genius, he could still hold his own against a fight. He was fifth place in the boys' ranking system. He was a basically unknown character. 
nothing special, completely inconspicuous. He was just one of his classmates as much as Naruto figured. The blonde would have to observe him a little more if he was going to be his teammate. Just so you not be confused, let me explain the ranking system. Jean was first, second being Shino. Third Kiba. Fourth, and OC fifth being Kagami. Though Naruto was pretty sure Kagami or anyone above him could take on Jean with no trouble. But it was his sensei that surprised him. No, he was astonished, astounded, stunned, stupefied, dumbfounded, flabbergasted and every other synonym that exists. His sensei was Danzo. How was that even possible? He was once an ANBU commanded, not to mention he was already nearing his seventies. Danzo was already retired but why was he a sensei now? What was his father thinking? It appeared that Naruto had to get what he wanted to know from Danzo himself, and the very idea appalled to him. In class, Iraka spared no delay. He gave a boring five-minute speech to the newly graduates, about shinobi responsibility, and the dangers of being ninja, so on so forth. After that, he immediately got to announcing team placement. Team 1 to 6 was merely cannon fodder, so fast forward to after team placement was announced. After every team was fished away, only team 7 and team 10 was left. Glances were thrown between the two teams, but only Shino and Naruto remained impassive and ignored the other team. Jin was seated with his team, Shino and Hinata flanking him. While Naruto was flanked by Shikamaru and Kagami, the Nara had his head laid on the table but eyes were as still opened. Apparently the tense atmosphere was keeping him from actually falling asleep. Kagami was merely sharpening his tanto. Naruto would occasionally glance at Hinata and let a small smile adorn his face. Of course, Jin once again did not miss it and after Naruto's third glance, Jin wrapped his arm around Hinata's shoulder. Smirking at Naruto's frown, the Jinchuriki mouthed the words she belongs to me to Naruto. Interesting fact, I got Jin's name from the term Jiyan Chiriki. Hinata of course turned beep red at the contact while Naruto, as almost tempted to shove Sin in Jin's throat. Sin is Naruto's right butterfly knife, remember? A few minutes passed by before a masked shinobi appeared in the classroom with a puff of smoke. The moss was simple, with two slits for eye holes and several small holes near the nose and mouth, presumably for breathing and speech. He knelt down on one knee team 10, you are required to meet Danzo-sama at training ground R01 near the southern section of the village. Please be there in half an hour. And with that, the shinobi disappeared in another puff of smoke. TCH, I did not put it past that old war hawk to actually send a messenger to inform us of his whereabouts. Naruto thought almost criticizing Danzo. Looking towards Shikamaru and Kagami, he gave a hand gesture as if to say follow me, I know where it is. Training ground R01, which represented Route 01 was a training ground used specifically by Route Umbu. When they were still around officially, now, it appeared it was still used by the Root, unofficially. When they reached the training ground, they merely found Danzo seated on the flood, meditating. Sensing their presence a mile away, he opened his one good eye. Come, take a seat. Danzo said, gesturing at the open space in front of him. Not wanting to disobey their first order from their newest sensei, they complied and sat facing Danzo. Now, let's start with introductions. The XANBU commander started, but was interrupted by Naruto. Sensei, said Blonde reluctantly started, I am sure we would prefer some privacy. So if you do not mind, could you please remove the five ninja hidden? He finished, staring straight at Danzo. The old war hawk looked surprised for a moment, before chuckling and snapped his fingers. Naruto immediately felt the five shinobi's presence vanish. Now, I will start first Danzo declared. My name is Danzo Shimura. I am an ex-ANBU commander of the root ANBU. I am now your sensei until the Hokage decides to change this. Then he motioned towards Shikamaru. The Nara merely muttered troublesome before continuing. My name is Nara Shikamaru. I am the heir of the Nara clan. He finished but Danzo urged him to continue, after saying tell us your likes, dislikes, hobbies and dream. With a heavy sigh, Shikamaru continued I like sleeping I guess. I don't like doing troublesome things. I don't have much of a hobby, but I do play shogi frequently. As for dreams I just want to be a regular shinobi. Marry a regular wife, not very beautiful and not very ugly. Have two kids, a girl and a boy, and die before my wife. Danzo nodded but inwardly he was thinking. I have read his profile. Says here. He has an IQ as high as 200. A lazy genius, HM? I would have to beat that lazy attitude out of him I guess. Then he motioned towards Kagami. Kuregain Kagami was an average looking 14 year old, with raven black hair spiked towards the back and a few bangs in front of his forehead. He wore a black muscle shirt and black basic ANBU issued pants with black shinobi sandals. He also wore black shoulder pads. Think Zach Fair from FF7 Crisis Core. My name is Kuregain Kagami. I do not belong to a clan though my family have been shinobi since the Shodames era. I like training and learning new jutsus. I dislike weaklings and civilians. My hobby is training and my dream is to master my family's kenjutsu style and become an exceptional shinobi, worthy of being a legend. Danzo nodded again. An average genin though slightly skilled. He would be a good teammate to complement the two other skills though his hairstyle and name reminds me of my late teammate. Wait, why am I reminiscing about the past? Lastly, he gestured towards Naruto. 
said Blonde seemed to contemplate his words before speaking. My name is Namikaze Naruto. I am the son of Namikaze Minato, the current Yandame Hokage. I like training as well. I do not dislike many things and my hobby is to train too. My dream, no, I promise to be the strongest shinobi the world will ever see. Naruto had to admit he lied about some of the things he said but the last part, he was completely serious. Nobody laughed, nobody said anything except Danzo who mentioned that it was a good dream. Now as you may or may not know, very John and Sensei would give a post-academy graduation, gen and test. To see if any of you are worthy of actually becoming shinobi. Regularly, the most common test would be to test your teamwork but I do not think the same way. I believe fighting capability is most important. As a result, my test will be a one-on-one -on -one with one my shinobi. Danzo explained before snapping his fingers again. And behind the three genins stood three root and bu. These three are all chunin level shinobi. I do not expect you to win but I will judge if you are able to proceed as a genin after this test. Now any questions? Naruto immediately asked can we kill them? Danzo chuckled if you manage to kill them. I might put in a word or two to the Hokage of immediately promoting you to Chunin. Both knew that was not possible but Naruto still looked forward to spilling their blood. Surprisingly, the three Rudambu took no offense to Naruto's question. One would thought an ANBU would be angry that the dead last even thought he could kill them, but they just stood there like statues. Who wishes to start first? Naruto immediately smirked. Danzo nodded and one of the ANBU operatives stepped forward and led Naruto to an empty grass field. Hajime. Danzo declared and Naruto performed several hand seals before shouting out his jutsu's name, Raitan, Yoroi immediately, a yellow-colored cackling armor of electricity surrounded Naruto. Surprised by the use of such a high level the root Umbu momentarily flinched, that was his first mistake. Naruto caught him by surprise with a kick, the Chunin barely dodged it though the kick grazed his cheek. Immediately, he could feel the numbing electricity running through his veins, but only years of training did he avoid being paralyzed. The Chunin then formed several hand seals and blew out a large fireball katan. Gukaya no Jutsu the massive ball of flames flew towards Naruto, and the blonde countered with a suetun, Sujin Hiki. A wall of water formed in front of Naruto. What shocked the root operative was that Naruto actually took the water and the grass below him to form the wall of water. Suetun, Daibakufa no Jutsu. A miniature version of the actual technique that should have risen several dozen meters high, but because of the lack of water, the technique was only a meter and a half high. The water flew towards the Ambiyu. But before said root Chunin could counter, Naruto immediately followed up with a right on Kengekiha. A pulse of electricity mixed with the torrent of water, made it a deadly combination. Only reflexes trained over the years allowed the Chunin to perform seals faster than usual and have a Dotan, Doria Hiki to block the electrified wave of water. The root operative unsheathed his katana that was strapped behind his back. With a quiet whisper of katan, Hai no Yaiba the blade was immersed in flames. That was his second mistake. He already knew Naruto either had a water affinity or well-versed in sweet unjutsus yet he continued using a fire technique against him. Naruto raised an eyebrow at his choice of jutsu. All the while, his teammates had their jaw wide open. The class dead last was this powerful? They had no idea. Perhaps what he said at the beginning of the year was correct. Did the Yandame really swap Jin's grades with Naruto? Danzo was also immensely surprised by did not show it outwardly. He knew Naruto was talented and even gifted, but to think it was to this extent with his training, Naruto could be even stronger than Itachi, but he frowned at his own lightning jutsu. The right un, Yoroi was supposed to grant the user light speed reflexes, yet he could never attain that type of mastery over this technique, no matter how much he practiced. The root Chunin eyed his opponent before charging forward, fire sword in hand. Normally, the high no yaiba technique allowed the user to form a blade of fire with nothing but chakra. But coupled with an actual sword, the potency of the jutsu was doubled. Naruto smirked at the simplistic way the Chunin attacked him. Forming several hand seals, Naruto yelled Futan, Kaze Taiku, wind resistance, and suddenly the Chunin felt a force pushing against him. It wasn't blowing him away but as if something was preventing him from moving forward. It took at least thrice the effort to move forward. The blonde grinned and formed several hand seals. Futan, Tempesta no Mai, Dance of the Tempest, and a second later, dozens of wind blades appeared all around the battlefield. The next thing the Chunin knew, they were all flying at him. He tried to jump away, honest, but Naruto's wind resistance jutsu kept him on the ground and the next moment, the root umbu's blood bathed the green grass. Naruto let out a sigh of relief. Before panting a little. Using 3A ranked and 3B ranked ninjutsu was a little exhausting. He heard clapping from Danzo. Said Warhawk was grinning almost manically. Absolutely amazing. Incredible. Just incredible. I was not lying when I said my shinobi was chunin ranked. And from what I have just seen, Naruto you might even be jounin level. Said Blonde stared at Danzo for a while deep in thought for a second, before walking away and joining his teammates. Though he stopped halfway. I believe he at least deserves a proper burial. Naruto mentioned before forming several hand seals Dotan, Tsuchi no Mai So, Earth Burial, the ground around what was left of the root Chunin wrapped around it, and dragged his remains below ground. He then sat down with his teammates, 
unaffected by their stares and awestruck looks. Next Danzo merely said and another of his ninjas stepped forward. This time, Shikamaru stepped forward and they were led to another field. Hajime. And the battle started, neither moved. Both looking at their opponents, trying to find a weak spot in their stances. And after a minute of the stare-off, Shikamaru grinned. He threw several kanais and shurikens at the chunin, at the root operative countered with his own projectiles. The battle unofficially started and both the chunin ran towards the nara. Unsheathing a tanto similar to the late root chunin, he prepared to slash Shikamaru. The Nara merely dropped a smoke bomb which burst into large quantities of purple-colored smoke, and jumped out of the way before an explosion rocked the field. The smoke quickly cleared and the root chunin was revealed. A little roughed up with a few slight burns on exposed skin, but nothing serious. What the root operative thought was a escape method turned out to be a dangerous trap. He had not seen the genin drop the explosive tag when the smoke bomb obscured his sight. Shikamaru smirked him hurting the chunin had guaranteed his passing of the genin exam but to give up now was too troublesome. More troublesome than continuing the fight. The only way he could win was to successfully use the shadow possession on the enemy. A few plans was already running through his head. But each of them was almost improbable. Then something clicked in his head. Of course, of course. It was so simple, yet he did not see it before. The Nara crouched down. Stabbing a kanai on the floor. Then he threw several projectiles at the ANBU. And the Chunin responded by deflecting the thrown weapons with his Tanto. Shikamaru reached into his pouch. Good, he at least had sufficient tools to utilize his plan. He fished out several explosive kanais, regular kanai but attached to an explosion note, and threw it at the root chunin. This time, he dodged it by jumping away, but after a few seconds nothing happened. A dummy note. The root NBU thought before seeing a kanai fly towards his head. He calmly bended his neck, and dodged the attack. Before widening his eyes, his entire body was suddenly immobile. He looked towards his shadow, immediately concluded that he was somehow caught in the Nara clan's famous shadow jutsu, and he was right. A thin strand of shadow was connected between Shikamaru and the ANBU. How? Naruto smirked as did Danzo, but Kagami looked confused. Shikamaru's plan was simple. When he stabbed the kunai into the ground, he did not do it just for nothing. The Nara discreetly activated the shadow possession technique and he enveloped the kunai with his shadow. Then he threw several kunai and shuriken at the ANBU to make him think the unskilled genin could only throw projectiles and nothing else, before pulling out the explosive kunai. That was the epitome of his plan. He threw those kanai in order to force the chunin into another position, as well as to distract him, as the technique he was going to use needed a clear straight path with no shadow hindering. With a few seconds of distraction, Shikamaru found an opening. He plucked out the shadow imbued kanai from the ground and threw it at the root chunin. A strand of shadow was connected to the kanai's shadow and to Shikamaru's shadow as it flew to the root operative. And just like he predicted, the root ANBU believed the kanai was as poor effort to injure him while distracted, and merely bend his head to dodge it. That was when the strand of shadow connected to the ANBU's own shadow. Kage Kanai made no jutsu success. Shadow Kanai possession, Shikamaru declared smirking. I can't believe I was caught in that shadow jutsu no, it was not luck. It was a plan that used my own arrogance against me. This kid is a genius, the ANBU operative thought while mentally praising Shikamaru. Normally, this would be where I defeat you but, Shikamaru started. But that'd be too troublesome to do, so I give up he ended while releasing the jutsu. He stood up and walked back towards his teammates. Danza looked pleased. Though the young genin had not defeated his ninja, it was still quite an accomplishment. Nara Shikamura pass. Next Danzo said and the last root chunin stepped forward while Kagami unsheathed his tanto. Seeing the genin take out his sword, so did the root umbu. Upon seeing his opponent's tanto, he immediately kept his tanto. The root chunin raised an eyebrow but did not say anything. Then Kagami unsealed the katana. The katana looked simple, but had an awe-inspiring aura. A swallow was engraved near the scabbard mouth, and the handle was wrapped in fine silk. Kagami then spoke. Allow me to introduce myself again. My name is Kurigane Kagami, user of the Shigure Sawan Ryu. Kagami started this as my companion, Shigure Kintoki. He gestured towards his sword. Seeing his student was Finisai Danzo declared Hajime. Shiji can no aim. Axel of rain, he shouted and was charged forward and attacked with a swift thrust. The root operative jumped back at the last second. Atsushi aim, duplicate rain, Kagami shouted and using his sway gun chakra, he formed a tidal wave of water with his sword. His reflection could still be seen through the water though. But suddenly, a glint of light came from above which caused the root chunin to look up and saw a sword strike headed towards him. He quickly dodged. Kagami slashed downwards, narrowly missing his target. Using the lack of distance as an advantage, he yelled his next attack. Sammy Dare, early summer rain, and slashed towards the right. The root umbu again barely dodged the attack but did not foresee the next slash. Midway of the slash, Kagami dropped his sword and switching hands, he slashed upwards with his left hand. A small cut found its way the root umbu's arm. Seeing his attack failing, Kagami jumped back immediately and panted heavily. That combination of attack almost exhausted his repertoire of his family's kenjutsu style. 
But there was one move though well, it was do or die. But before Kagami could do anything the opponent charged forward, Tonto in hand. Kagami smirked and jumped up and slashed downwards. His katana landed on the opponent's Tonto. But the root Chunin widened his eyes. His body unmovable. The genin smirked before declaring his attack. Attacko di Squalo. Attacko di Squalo is a shockwave attack which turns a powerful blow into an oscillating wave that stuns the opponent's muscle, leaving the enemy immobile. Kagami's smirk widened and knocked the root umbu out with the blunt side of his katana. Or so he thought. The root Chunin immediately disappeared with a poof. Do you think you are the only swordsman? And suddenly, Kagami's world blacked out. The Chunin Kagami had thought he struck down stood before his fallen body. Dance of the Crescent Moon he muttered before heading back towards Danzo. This time, the XANBU commander shook his head. Q regained Kagami fail. It was regretful to say the least. The boy had potential, but was too blinded by arrogance to see a simple trick. He then ordered the root Chunin to place Kagami's body leaning against the tree and after doing so, the second and third root Umbu promptly disappeared with a poof of smoke. Congratulations you two passes. Danzo said while Naruto and Shikamura gave each other a look. What about Kagami? Naruto asked. Danzo shook his head the other genin failed my test. Shikamaru glared at Danzo. Though Kagami and him were not close, he was still his teammate why? He did good against Yoshinobi. He tried to defend his unconscious teammate. He lost. He believed that he won and could not see past the simple B, ranked Kenjutsu technique due to his cocky attitude. I will repeat myself once more. Danzo glared at Shikamaru he failed. The Nara looked unsatisfied with the answer but knew better than to argue. Naruto had no outwardly expression but he did ask a question. What happens now? Genin teams are supposed to be four men cells. Danzo nodded your failure of a teammate shall be replaced with a genin on standby due to insufficient numbers. Now return home and rest well. Tomorrow you will be introduced to your new teammate and start missions. Is that clear? Danzo asked. After seeing he only received reluctant nods, he asked again, this time louder. Is that clear? Both genin replied yes sensei. Good. Danzo entered the Hokage's office reluctantly, knowing that the irksome Hokage was in the room. How he hated that blonde brat. He was only that chair because the Sandane was too stupid to realize what a lousy leader he is before naming him as his successor. But he still had to get the mission before meeting his team. Team 10 reporting for a mission Minato. The Hokage eyed Danzo with disdain. Angry at the blatant disrespect Danzo was showing. But then again, he could not do anything anyways. Danzo was too important to Kanoha to simply disappear. You will address with as much respect as my title deserves, Danzo. The blonde shot back with his disrespect as well. The old war hawk glared at the impudent whelp. If it was not for protocols, he would have just taken a mission scroll from the table and walked away. But, he had to keep formalities and as much as he hated it, he would have to comply. Understood, Hokage-sama? Minato smirked, thinking he had won. The Yandame randomly picked a scroll from desk and offered it to Danzo. The XANBU commander looked at the mission's rank and immediately frowned. I believe my team deserves a much higher rank than a simple d rank chore that pays next to nothing. Minato almost laughed. Please, do not tell me you believe a team with the dead last and second last qualifies for even a C-ranked mission. Even a D-rank, I believe would be too much for my son. Danzo merely stared on. Hokage-sama he spat out as if it was poison my team is much, much more skilled and efficient than you believe. At least two or even three times better than any other genin team. Minato glared at him. Was that an insult? You just claimed my son's team to be weaker than your team of garbage. The warhawk smirked. Of course not, Hokage-sama. I did not meant for my words to be taken to offense. I am merely stating what I think. My team is better than your son's genin team. That is all, the blonde Hokage growled. He snatched a B-ranked mission from the desk and shoved it in Danzo's hands. Well then let's see how your useless team survived this, the root commander smirked. Thank you Hokage-sama. And he turned around to leave. Hook, line, sinker. Too easy, Minato. You are too easy to manipulate because of your arrogance. Too brash and headstrong. Like I had told Sarutobi, Naruto was leaning against the tree while waiting for Danzo, while his other teammate, Shikamaru was lying on the ground asleep. The blonde genin eyed the lazy genius with curiosity. Sleeping was that all he did? If the Nara could put in half of Naruto's efforts he could be a very skilled shinobi. But what was holding him back? Fear of rejection? Fear of corruption? But was there even a need to fear anything when you could be one of the strongest shinobi in the world? But knowing and familiar with the phrase, curiosity killed the cat Naruto decided to leave Shikamaru be. After all, a nosy ninja is a dead ninja. The blonde would just go along, get along. After he becomes Chunin, they probably won't stay as a team anyways. A few minutes later, Naruto's mental clock reached 8 a.m. and Shikamaru snapped open his eyes. Together with Danzo was a kid. The stranger had short ink black hair, with extremely pale skin, almost white and ink black eyes. He wore a regular long-sleeved black shirt, black shinobi pants taped off at the end and black shinobi sandals. His only weapons was the tanto strapped to his back and a scroll strapped to his waist. 
His face betrayed no emotion other than the cold indifference that all root member had. Which immediately told Naruto and Shikamaru this person was one of Danzo's subordinates. This boy's name is Sai. He will be joining you too as a member of Team 10. Danzo said and seeing a raised eyebrow from Naruto, he quickly continued do not worry about his fighting capabilities. He will be more than sufficient as your teammate. I personally tested him myself. A quick nod from Naruto and Danzo continued. I have received your first mission from the Hokage. Danzo started before being interrupted. What is it? Painting a fence. Cleaning the farm? Shikamaru asked, uninterested. Danzo glared at the Nara. First off, do not interrupt me, and secondly, no. We will be traveling to a civilian village near the borders of Fire Country. There we will be performing a mission for the mayor of the town. The ANBU commander explained. What mission? Naruto asked, truly curious. Normally the first mission of a genin team would be simple chores around the village that required little to no effort. But having to travel out of the village to perform their first mission? That really piqued Naruto's interest. Danzo smirked assassination. At this both Naruto and Shikamaru eyes widened. Oh. You are kidding right? This was extremely shocking to say the least. Assassination? Not like Naruto did not like it. But such an extreme mission right off the bat this was simply astonishing. No I am not. This mission is rank B. In this village, there is a civil war going on. There is the mayor's forces, and the rebel forces. The details of their civil war is not of our concern. We were hired to assassinate the leader of the rebel forces, in order to outright flatten the rebels' morale. Danzo explained, eyeing the genin's reaction. Naruto looked calculating, a little excited and still retained the initial shock, while Shikamaru had a mix of apathy and astonishment. And Sai had no emotion whatsoever. Good, that meant Root trained him well. Our target's name is Yamamoto Shinji. He is considered a hero amongst the village for driving bandits away. But still that is none of our concern. We have received our target. There shall be no hesitation once the mission begins. So if either of you wishes to back out now, you will be sent on to the Genin Reserve list and be replaced. Danzo waited for an answer, though inwardly knowing neither of them would be willing to back out of this. Seeing no reaction, Danzo continued. Good, now, return and prepare for at least a three-day trip. In an hour from now, we shall meet at the northern gate and head off immediately. You are dismissed. The two wasted no time and left leaving Danzo and Sai. The Umbu commander turned to the pale Genin. Sai, your role in this team is to be your teammate's support in battle. Do not do more than what is necessary but you are cleared to do anything you have to. But most importantly, you are to watch them. Especially the Namikes. Understood? Sai merely nodded. Good. Naruto entered the Namikes mansion he was greeted with the sight of his brother greedily inhaling a large bowl of what he calls the food of the gods which was ramen. Jean was clumsily slurping the soup and spilling drops of the broth everywhere. That had to be the highest form of bad table manners. Noticing his presence, Jean turned to face Naruto, and the blonde crinkled his face in disgust. Strands of noodles were hanging off his face, while his entire lower face was covered in its soup. Without noticing his own little problem, Jean began to mock Naruto, mentioning his dead last position, and how useless he was, the usual. And as usual, Naruto merely ignored his brother, and went to his room to pack for his journey. He took a few pairs of clothing, quite like the ones he had on now, and sealed them into a storage scroll. Then he acquired some ninja tools from his brother's room. That idiot would probably think he misplaced them anyways. He left the house in 30 minutes after sealing a dozen energy bars. One of them would guarantee his energy for the whole day. Reaching the northern gate, he was met by Shikamaru who was already gazing at the sky while lying on his back. Deciding to test his fellow teammate, he asked him, What do you think of this? Shikamaru lazily opened one eye and looked at Naruto who was leaning against the tree with his eyes closed. If you mean this mission then I think it would be really troublesome. Naruto smirked at the underlying meaning of that word. I agree. Their sensei soon arrived with Sai and Toe, and they quickly left for their mission. The journey there was highly uneventful though Danzo explained several of his rules. The first rule is to never show emotions in battle. The second rule was to never become familiar with their client, or other people there. The third and most important rule was to never have any emotions for anyone other than yourselves. They soon arrived at the village within a one-day trip. Team 10 was currently staked out outside of the village's surrounding forest. Merely two guards were posted at the village gates and from the looks of it, for Kanoha shinobis weren't going to be let in easily. Of course, they were not supposed to reveal themselves just yet. This B-ranked mission was to be a covert mission. A strictly stealthy assassination that would not be traced back to Kanahagakur. Otherwise assassinating a civilian without ninja guards would be only considered a C-rank at most. It would be too easy to sneak in and kill the leader in his sleep. Or even a well-thrown shuriken or kanai would be capable enough to kill him. But the client repeatedly instructed the shinobi hired to use civilian methods to kill Yamamoto Shinji and Danzo decided poison would be very much easier. The ANBU commander looked over at his team and after some consideration, decided Naruto to sneak in and poison the rebels' drinking water. The blonde smirked and immediately accepted. And when the Namikaze left, Sa was instructed to shadow the blonde and report every detail to Danzo. Danzo and Shikamaru then stayed in the forest, 
where the root leader supposedly utter creamed Shikamaru in Shogi. More on Naruto's assassination now. The blonde sneaked into the village rather easily. The security was almost non-existent. There were several patrols but none of them were observant enough to notice a ninja traveling from their rooftops. The rebel faction was located near the west of the village, and that was Naruto's destination. And also realizing Danzo sent his other teammate to follow him was quite insulting. Naruto reached the rebel's stronghold, which was a hospital turned fortress. Wooden stakes was littered around the front of the fortress while guards armed with bows and arrows were placed at the rooftop. And the only unsealed exit which was the front was guarded by a dozen armed guards. But none of them was important, for Naruto was a ninja, and he certainly had means to slip around this barricade of guards. Forming several hand seals, he quietly whispered out Kajiro no Jutsu, Mayfly technique, and he quickly sunk into the ground. From his point of view, he was underground and could look upwards. His method of travel was kind of like swimming but without the pedaling. He was almost twice as slow as he was on land. Naruto reached the hospital's kitchen. Inside were several cooks preparing food for half the village's population. A rather extravagant dinner comprising of steak and wine was assumed to be the leader's dinner, and a pinch of good old poison powder was added into the steak without anyone. Noticing Naruto, the blonde immediately performed a shunshin in the ground and returned to his sensei to report a mission completed. Danzo then brought his team to the mayor to report mission complete. That was then, the mission received its first little twist. The mayor, a fat pig of a man was looking through several documents before hastily speaking to Team 10. Mission changed. I as the client, now upgrade this mission to A rank. You four are to slaughter all of the rebels now. Danza looked at the fat man unimpressed I am sorry, but this A ranked mission shall be considered a separate mission from the B rank. You will have to pay us for both the first mission and this one as well. The mayor sputtered indignifiedly before reluctantly agreeing. The rebel faction have decided for one last attack at our forces for revenge. If we truly clash right now, there will be many casualties, and our village cannot afford to the mayor started explaining but was interrupted by Danzo. We do not need an explanation. We shall perform and task you ask of us as long as a substantial fee is paid of course. Now we shall move out. And with that, Team 10 turned and prepared for the incoming battle. On the way to meet the rebels in battle, Shikamaru gulped and asked Danzo what Naruto had wished to inquire as well. Are we going to kill? Danzo raised an eyebrow what's wrong, we ninjas were raised to kill. Shikamaru looked down and did not reply. Naruto however had a manic expression on his face. He had not imagined that the thought of slaughtering a bunch of helpless civilians would excite him so much. This was it, Naruto decided. He had finally found the thing that excited him so greatly. He felt alive, Team 10 met the opposing forces. If anyone who saw that did not know better, they would probably think the four was walking into a bloodbath. But the rebels said nothing. Anger consumed their entire being and all they could think was to kill anyone that helped the mayor. With a battle roar, they shouted for Shinji. And they charged at the Konoha Shinobi weapons drawn, swords, pitchforks, shovels, basically anything metal they could lay their hands on. Naruto could on longer contain his excitement, he decided to start things off with a bang. He formed several hand seals and shouted out the name of one of his strongest katan jutsus. Katan, go carry Winden, great dragon flame bullet, the oncoming massive inferno ate away a fifth of the rebels army. But they did not stop, or falter even a little. That put a smile on Danzo and Naruto's face. Sai then unleashed his attack. He swiped out his scroll and paintbrush. He infused his chakra into the ink and drew two lions and he shouted Chojigiga, super beast imitation picture, and the two ink lions burst from the scroll seemingly with a life of its own. The two lions ran towards the rebel forces and with their claws and fangs began to take out several of them. Shikamaru also played his part. Though reluctant, he began to throw explosive kunais and using Shuriken Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone, which killed many of the rebels as well. Danzo on the other hand just watched as his three genin massacred the civilians. Though armed, they were no match for highly trained shinobi after all. With Naruto, the blonde was enjoying himself far too much. His kanai was slitting throats here and there. The Namikes then formed several hand seals. Futon, Daikame Tachi no Jutsu. Great sickle weasel technique. And watched in morbid fascination as blades of wind sliced apart multiple sword-wielding fools. Blood bathed the entirety of Naruto. Liquid dripped down his hair. A mixture of sweat and blood. Not a drop was his own though. Jayahahaha. He manically laughed. The scent and sight of his work excited him. His hands trembled in anticipation as he immediately turned around and dug his hands into a civilian trying to backstab him. Naruto reached deeper into the person and after finding what he wanted, he ripped his arm out holding onto a beating heart. Arg! The victim screamed and dropped to the floor, his chest open with blood gushing out. The blonde crushed the organ in his hands and returned to his slaughter. His eyes looked about, trying to find worthy prey and noticed a bunch of quivering men cowering in fail. But after seeing this horrendous mass murder, their gusto dispersed into thin air. This wasn't what they wanted. This was not what they had imagined. They came to get revenge for their hero, but this was a nightmare. The blue-eyed Namikaze formed several hand seals and shouted right on, John, false darkness, 
and a spear-shaped bolt of lightning emitted from Naruto's mouth and pierced one of the cowering man. And another hand seal later, Naruto was immediately within that group with a loud clap of thunder. It was his own personal jutsu, one that could be considered s rank depending on the situation and user. Raitan, Kaminari Kawarimi, Thunder Substitution, was a technique that allowed the user to replace itself with electricity. It could only be used by people with a lightning affinity. One of Naruto's own creation. He had tried the jutsu with Futan and Katan, but the technique just simply could not work on wind. And with fire, he simply burned himself. The group was currently stunned. The loud clap of thunder was literally next to their ears and were too stupefied to do anything. Naruto then gathered lightning chakra in his hands. Raitan sanda apu, thunder up, and pressed the lightning chakra into a round ball. The blonde smashed the ball into the ground, causing a huge explosion of electricity, killing the group and those around. By now, only a tenth was left of what was a large force. Shikamaru's mass number of projectiles and size ink lions managed to dispatch a fifth of them while the rest was finished off by Naruto. The survivors began to retreat in fear. Though Danzo would have none of that. His first show of shinobi techniques appeared in a stealthy show of skill. The hundred or so people began to drop dead one by one as they were cut down by Danzo in surprising speed. A minute later, all of them were dead. Now, the exhausted Team 10 returned to the mayor's manor and reported a mission well done, in which the fat pig flinched at the sight and smell of blood and gore all over Naruto. But what really sickened him though, was the manic smile on Naruto. And with the blonde Namikaze, he just found what was his calling in life. Team 10 reporting a mission completed. Danzo monotonously said, with his team flanking him. For the most part, Minato was simply looking shocked and surprised that Danzo's team survived. Surely, a B-rank mission would cause at least his son's death. Gee good. Head over to the mission counter to receive your pay. Oh and Gaki, Minato referring to Naruto. Don't worry about the money, I will be keeping it for you. And the Hokage smirked. Naruto widened his eyes slightly but merely nodded. He should have seen this coming a mile away. That was when Team 7 arrived. Yes, his brother's team. Jean bounced in with a grin on his face with Hinata and Shino in tow, the Hyuga blushing and poking her index fingers together, and the Abiram silent as always. Team 7 was at the very least a functional team. At the very first day, Jean had expressed to Shino of his position as top dog in the team, which meant he wanted Shino to follow his orders. In which the Abiram replied rather blunt reply in the negative Jean had immediately threatened Shino with the loss of his career. The silent Kakaichu wielding Jenin who was quickly beginning to all respect of the Kyubi Jinchuriki, merely ignored the arrogant imbecile, which angered in which a punch was thrown by Jean to put Shino in his place. The Abiram had to pinch himself to believe that the rookie of the year was charging him like a civilian. Shino merely sidestepped to the right, and Jean almost tripped himself. The Namikaze glared at Shino and was about to use a jutsu when their conversation was interrupted by Hinata. The Hyuga quickly placed herself in front of Jean and raised the hands beside her. Stop bullying Jean Kuen, Shino. Seeing the legendary, Bayakugan glare Shino, out of courtesy really, apologized and walked off. Now, Jean and Shino had been rivals, as the Namikaze called them, ever since. Currently, Team 7 appears to be requesting for a mission. Kakashi followed Team 7 a moment later. Team 7 reporting for a mission, Sensei, Kakashi said professionally. After the loss of Rin and Abito, Kakashi had been devastated. Minato, in order to help his student, initiated Kakashi into the ANBU. To allow the never-ending AS-ranked missions make the copy ninja forget about the two. Well, the Hataki did in fact, got over the death of his two teammates after a while. But it was commonly known that if Minato had died during the QB attack, Kakashi would probably break. The silver-haired Nin was now the Jounin sensei of Team 7. Only being pulled out of ANBU by the same person who sent him there to train his son. While Minato and Kakashi were discussing which D-rank mission to give his team, Jean spotted Naruto over with his team. Ignorant of the fact that the Exumburut commander was standing right next to Naruto, Jean stepped forward and started laughing at him. What happened, Dobe? You and your trash team took three days to complete a D-rank? The brown-haired Jinchuriki continued laughing himself silly at his supposedly funny insult. And now T that W wasn't very nice. J. Jinkun the deeply blushing Hinata stepped forward. Naruto for a moment smiled. Before hearing the next words. H however W weak team T10 is that surprised Naruto. Hinata who was ever so kind and gentle, had called his team weak. Hinata's words caused several other reactions as well. Danzo had an eyebrow raised, surprised that the timid Hyuga heiress dared to say that. Shikamura looked shocked for a moment before looking away and muttering troublesome woman Sai was just Sai. By now, the third member of Team 7 had already learned to stay away from confrontations like this. What with this incident's happening at least twice a day, Jean would go up to some genin team, insult them with some ridiculous statement, and though the opposing team would be angered, but nothing could be done against the Hokage's son, Naruto could barely control his rage. Hinata-chan was being corrupted by his brother. This was the conclusion he reached. Hinata would never say anything like that to anyone subconsciously or not. But he gritted his teeth and replied curtly. No, just from an A-ranked mission. Jin's eyes narrowed in disbelief, 
that upon the look of the mission scroll with A-rank written on it, anger took over his narrowed eyes. He quickly turned towards his father and Kakashi and demanded an explanation. Tu-san, how could Naruto Baka go on an A-ranked mission, when all we did these past three days were D-ranked chores? Shino had to roll his eyes at that. On the last mission, Team 7 was to paint a civilian's fences. Though once the client had seen Jean, she immediately invited him in for cookies and milk while the rest of the team worked under the hot sun. His female teammate even praised how famous Jean was getting while clumsily handling the paintbrush. Obviously, the heiress of the prominent Hyuga clan had never done such menial work. Minato tried to calm down his son, but was failing badly, and the Hokage threw a hated glare at Naruto, catching the blonde off guard. Only when Kakashi told Jean to be quiet in a harsh tone, did Jean stand down, albeit reluctantly. Naruto was surprised. He would have thought his father would give his oh-so-arrogant brother an S-ranked mission by now, seeing how the Hokage always praised how powerful of a ninja Jean was. By now, Danzo already had enough of this nuisance named Jean and decided to leave and Team 10 followed him. They were soon outside the Hokage's tower, and Danzo abruptly turned around. Good job on the mission, but do not expect any slack. We shall meet at the training ground tomorrow for another mission. Hopefully, this time we will be able to get in a bit more training. Six months passed too fast for Naruto to believe. In between various missions varying from C, A, Team 10 was able to get in quite a bit of training. Shikamaru improved the most. Danzo had, as he promised to himself, beat the lazy attitude out of Shikamaru. Now, the Nara dare not say or do anything remotely connected to that word. After finding out his chakra affinity which was wind, the Nara was able to learn several wind jutsus from Danzo, though none was above B-ranked. The ANBU commander did not see the need of powerful jutsus for a brilliant strategist such as Shikamaru. Although the Genin had learned his own clan's shadow jutsus though, Naruto, under the training of the root leader, had surpassed even his own expectations. Danzo dragged and left Naruto in the most hellish training ever seen since Guy's own training. The Umbu commander took the blonde's potential, stretched and flexed it till it was twice its original size. Within six months, Naruto could be called the second coming of Minato but more smart. But none were aware of his growth though. Danzo was careful in not revealing his students' skills. A day earlier, Danzo had informed Team 10 of their enrollment in the Chunin exams. Naruto and Shikamaru or course expected as much, and Sai well he was just being Sai. Today was the first day of the Chunin exam. Naruto and the rest of Team 10 was headed towards the academy to officially register for the exams. As the team proceeded up the stairs and into the third floor, they noticed a bunch of people gathered around the door. As they got closer, they noticed two shinobis guarding the door. But the moment Naruto laid eyes upon them, he was easily able to sense the advanced henge. The two genin was testing them. Just when Team 10 was about to leave though, Team 7 suddenly paraded through the crowd of wannabe ninjas. Oh, let us into the room, you two imbeciles. Naruto had to look shocked for a moment. Wow, imbecile that's a large word for such a small brain. Hinata who was beside him, reddened in embarrassment. Ayano, Jin Kuen. The sign is a genjutsu. We are still on the second floor. Jean looked sheepish for a moment before demanding the two get out of the way. The two henge gen and sweat dropped. Quite arrogant for just a brat. Let's see you taste this. One of the two declared and threw a high kick towards Jean. Well he obviously did not realize Jean was the Hokage's son. Or he would have begged for forgiveness and laid a red carpet for Jean to walk through. Naruto rolled his eyes at that but was looking forward to seeing his brother kicked in the face. But was surprised when a person wearing a green spandex suit ran in between his brother and the guard. Well, to the others was only a green blur. But to Naruto, he could clearly see the strange genin run by and stop the attack. Not a bad speed. Almost high chunin, but still need more practice. He wasted too much movement in that simple act. Please do not fight amongst ourselves, we should be at least civil to one another. Naruto got a clear look at the boy. We was wearing a green spandex body suit, an orange arm and leg warmers, had a sleek black bowl cut. And weirdly enough, perfectly round eyes with large eyebrows above them. Jean was obviously astonished by the pure speed the other genin showed judging from the slack jaw and widened eyes before turning away with the TCH. Naruto watched as Team 7 walked away. The blonde-eyed Hinata, though feelings that he had six months ago no longer existed now. He had thrown away all feelings of affection after being harshly and forcefully rejected by the Hyuga. Flashback. Note. Disgusting Hinata bitchiness ahead. I don't want to write this, but it is crucial. So, Hinata fans, if you do not want to read this, just skip ahead until you see another one of this. Hinata Naruto softly whispered to only the ears of his heim. And Naruto? Hinata replied confused as to why the blonde had asked to talk with her. They were on a flowery field. Luscious green grass and alluring flowers filled the ground. Behind Naruto's back was a red rose plucked from the very field. Hinata, I called you here to ask you a question. Hi Naruto. What is it? Hinata again replied politely. But she was quickly getting impatient. She was supposed to be meeting her team in a few minutes. I Naruto stammered before swallowing his fears I want to ask you to be my girlfriend. He asked with a determined look. Hinata was thrown back by the question W what? Naruto quickly continued I know we have not been very close together, but I have always watched you. 
since the academy days I have always loved you, I know you like my brother, but just give me a chance. I can show you, I can show you that you can love as much as my brother or even more. He presented the rose to Hinata but was slapped a second later. A red palm mark found its way to Naruto's right cheek. Hinata was bristling in anger. Dobe, listen to me, I have worked too far and too long for you to fuck this up. Surprised at the slap and her tone of voice, Naruto stood solid. You think I like that pompous, arrogant jerk? No. I am merely doing this to help further my clan's position in power. Why else would you think anyone would even pretend to be in love with that bloody douchebag? She screamed. Now get the fuck lost, and don't let me see you doing this. She crinkled her face in disgust again. Or I swear I will bloody murder you, Dobe. Now I have to meet that and the team. Don't you mention this to anyone or you. Will. Regret. It fucking dead last she muttered at the end and strutted off. Naruto's eyes widened and mouth agaki. All this time, all this effort. Tears threatened to stream down his cheeks. But he held it back in. It was then that the last line that connected the village to Naruto was severed. Flashback end. Well I did not have doing that. It was unpleasant, and just completely sickening. Before you bitch and whine about how Hinata is not like that, this is my story, so it will be great if you not flame things I already know. Thanks. Naruto was just indifferent to Hinata nowadays, and her admittedly charming Naruto shook his head. He had to clear these thoughts. She had after all announced to Naruto of her dislike towards him. Now, Naruto just wanted to get this exams over with and get to Chunin rank. But out of the corner of his eye, he noticed the bullcut Jen in gazing at Jean. A smirk found its way to Naruto's face as he saw Lee follow Jean. Interesting. Using hand signs, as in sign language, he told Shikamaru and Sai to wait for him at the real classroom. This he had to see. When Naruto arrived, the spandex-wearing boy introduced himself and challenged Jean to a fight. His brother looked at the genin once over and gave an arrogant humph. Hinata urged Jean to not fight as they only had a little time left to register, but as usual, Jean declared a minute was enough to bring down this weakling and charged towards his opponent. The newly named Rock Lee was surprised. The speed of his opponent was unbelievably slow. He had not expected the famous son of the legendary Yandame Hokage to be so weak. A single punch buried itself into Jin's gut, and the Jinchuriki flew away, unconscious immediately. Lee looked at his fist then at Jean. A genin that had genius never seen before should have been able to dodge that attack, if not lock it. He hardly even tried. Naruto shook his head at the utter pathetic situation and jumped down as Lee was about to leave. Greetings. My name is Namikaze Naruto. Lee's eyes widened and turned back. Then you must be Jin Kun's brother, no? The blonde nodded I heard you were the dead last of the class. But it does not matter. Even I who was the dead last of my class had found the way of youth and is now youthful to the extreme. Lee shouted, pumping his fists in the air. Naruto nodded slowly. Right well, I am here to test myself against who I believe to be the genin strongest in taijutsu. You rock Lee, said genin formed an O with his mouth and relaxed himself into a loose fighting stance. Then let us begin your most youthful spar. Sorry Lee, but you are too powerful to let you stay in this exam. I will not let my chance of being promoted be compromised in any way. Naruto thought darkly as he himself settled himself into a loose fighting stance. Seeing as the blonde did not attack, Lee took it upon himself to initiate the fight. One moment he was standing opposite to Lee, the next he was beside Naruto, his kick caught by the blonde. Not fast enough. Lee, please be more serious Naruto muttered and pushed back his leg, said Jen and only smiled brightly. At least this Naruto character was not as weak as his brother. Perhaps he made a mistake? This must be the genius Jinchuriki everyone was talking about. Lee once again reappeared in front of Naruto, Konoha Senpa, and a kick flew towards Naruto. Anger at his lack of motivation, Naruto gave a swift punch to Lee's gut, and he flew back. The spandex-wearing Jenin almost threw up his breakfast. I said be more serious. That attack was not even half your speed and strength. Naruto demanded. Lee had the decency to look sheepish. It seems I underestimate you, Naruto Kun. Very well, from now on, this is my full power. Lee declared and Naruto found his fist too close for comfort, but Naruto was still faster than him. The blonde gripped his opponent's wrist and sent a jab towards Lee's face. But with his reaction speed, Lee was easily able to dodge the jab, but found himself at the receiving end of Naruto's foot as he was kicked away. Through intense training, did Naruto learn to multitask and control several of his limbs in different motions at once. Lee clutched his chest which coughing, the kick had knocked the wind out of his lungs. That was not your full power, take off those weights, Lee. There is no sense in defeating an opponent limited by hunks of metal. Lee looked shocked that his opponent knew he was wearing weights. But although he was reluctant, he removed the weights and placed them on the ground gently. Which meant he dropped them from shoulder height, and created a large crack in the ground. This time Naruto kun, I will give my all, and Lee reappeared in front of Naruto. Dai Kanoha Senpu. Great leaf whirlwind. The blonde smirked. This was what he wanted to see. The Namikaze raised his knee and drived his elbow downwards at the same time, catching Lee's leg right in between the two limbs. Naruto then drove the elbow down with greater force, 
effectively shattering the bone. Kosa Ho. Intersection method. Arg. A large shout from Lee showed that at least one bone was broken. Naruto released the grip and let Lee fall on the floor, gripping his ankle. The blonde smirked. He knew the weights would have protected Lee from this technique. Only prompting Lee to remove them could allow Naruto to successfully break his leg. A sudden burst of wind caused Naruto to jump back in caution. Now, next to Lee was a larger clone of his. This one was taller, more well-defined muscles and a jounin vest. He cradled Lee in his arms and after looking at the now swollen ankle, he glared at Naruto. Who taught you that technique? That was a dangerous taijutsu maneuver that should not be used against fellow ninjas of the same village. The man shouted. Naruto raised an eyebrow. TCH, someone created that technique already? I thought I was the first. How depressing that uncaring tone angered the older Lee and before he could do anything rash, he calmed himself down. I will have a speak with your Jounin sensei, Namake's Naruto. The Jounin warned before he shunned Shin away. How boring Naruto muttered before glancing at Hinata who was looking at him with awe. The blonde for a moment thought that his show of strength could attract her, but as quickly as it came, he gave up that thought. He merely waved see you, and shunned away as well. The one thing on Naruto's head was Sono Chunin Shuriken wa Omashiro. The Chunin exams are interesting. Naruto's POV before Hinata's rejection. So I was just minding my business at a training ground, practicing several high-ranking jutsus from one of my father's jutsu scrolls when a white dove flew towards me. A white dove represented the Hyuga clan. I caught the bird with my hands and noticed a message tied to its leg. I removed the paper and it said, I need you here now stud. Hinata I could not believe it. The girl who I have been crushing on all academy years just asked me to I could not think straight anymore. So I packed up all my things and headed over to the Hyuga compound. I snuck through the numerous guards and when I found Hinata's room, I knocked on her door. And she answered in fabric so skimpy, I would not even begin to call them clothes. I mean she looked awesome she wore a black, tight see-through tank top and under it was a black bra covering her rather well-developed chest and also black tight biker shorts. That did not even reach her thighs. As soon as I get in, she pushed me onto her bed and told me to lay down and trust her. And as they say, love is blind I complied. And before I could say anything, she left the room for what feels like 30 minutes. So I sat there, waiting for her. And when Hinata finally comes back, with a shopping bag she pulled out a big roll of duct tape. It freaked me out a little, but trying to be flirtatious, I asked her what are we doing? Fixing some pipes? She laughed, and proceeded to bind my ankles together, and my hands behind my back. She whispered in my ear that she had big plans for us. This should have been the first sign for me to get the hell out, but I stayed. Hinata then asked in a flirty way how my ninjutsu training was coming, and after I answered it was going pretty well, she put a tape over my mouth, and I freaked out. As I struggled to get out, I watched her get up and put on street clothes. Grab the jutsu scroll from my pouch with all my jutsus in it, and walk out of the room. About two hours later, her sister Hanabi comes in and sees me. Instead of untying me, she laughed and started calling all her academy friends and other Hyuga members into the room to show them what thinking with your balls get to. Pictures were taken, people drew all over my face. And I couldn't do anything about it. I felt like a caged gorilla. After I don't know how long, Hanabi cut the tape and let me go. My scroll was waiting outside the Hyuga compound but all the jutsus were presumably copied down, and that was the day I learned to not think with my balls. Naruto met his team at the door of Academy Classroom 304. You ready? The blonde asked his teammates. Both nodded in the affirmative. Naruto grinned before returning to its initial stoic. He opened the door and entered the room, noting the tense situation. He decided to be as inconspicuous as can be and headed to a corner, flanked by his team. He stood silently, observing the examinees. From the look of their headbands there were many Kanoha Genins, a few Taki teams, Three AIM teams and surprisingly, a whopping four IWA teams. Naruto narrowed his eyes. IWA shinobi participating in a Chunin exam hosted by their most hated enemy? It screamed suspicious. He also noticed some from his graduating class. Shikamaru was about to go greet Chuji when Naruto stopped him by placing a hand on his shoulder. Six months with the blonde and Shikamaru already learned that Naruto was not one to disobey. Flashback. It was an A-ranked mission. A simple search and destroy, target being Rokusho Aoi. Shikamaru's plan had backfired as several aim means ambushed them halfway upon completion of his plan. Sai managed to hold his own while Naruto had already decimated half of the ambush team. Danzo was merely observing with intrigue, interested to know how his team was going to handle this new development. Shikamaru on the other hand, was a bit unfortunate as Aoi attacked the Nara from his blind side and took him as a hostage. Unless you want your friend to die, stop moving. He threatened. Naruto merely looked towards the nuke and smirked. Do you think I am a person who saves people? and threw a punch at Aoi, breaking his face, while Shikamaru was cut on the cheek by Aoi's kunai when he flew back from Naruto's punch. The Nara was then always wary of his teammate. Flashback end. A familiar scene from my other story The White Mask for those who have read it. He continued scanning the crowd and he saw a Suna team. Reaching into his memory, he remembered who they were. From the looks of it, the Kazakage sent his own children into the Chunin exam. 
interesting especially the red-haired one. He reeks of blood and killing intent. I want to fight him. He looks like he could put up a real fight, Naruto thought, unconsciously directing his killing intent at the Suninin. Said Jenin noticed Naruto's killing intent and stared right back at the blonde, both directing their killing intent at each other. Seconds later, the Suna Jenin began to sweat. This one is dangerous. Killing him would prove my existence even more. That was when Team 7 barged in loudly. They immediately flinched at the glares they were receiving before Jean rudely shouted, Hey you bastards, I am Namike's Jean, the son of the legendary Yellow Flash. You bastards better remember my name, as I will be the one who crushes all of you in this exam. The mention of Minato caused the IWA Jenins to stand up sharply. All of them were how you say pissed off. They whispering among themselves. Son of the yellow flash. Kill him. Stupid, don't be reckless. We can take him. There are probably A and B you here, dumbass. Our greatest enemy is standing in front of us, and we can't even do anything. We will have our chances now just sit down quietly. Jean then continued talking smack to everyone in the classroom, even though half of the room was glaring at him. But he was thankfully interrupted by a certain blonde. No, not Naruto. Ino Yamanaka jumped on Jin's back, yelling out Jin Kuen. While they were off in their own little world, Naruto noticed many of them were beginning to get a bit feisty, probably from the tense situation. Silently chuckling, Naruto just thought how fun it would be if the whole room turned to a major free-for-all battle. He could do so much to these little kitties. But before anyone could do anything, a silver-haired genin walked over to them Hey you guys should be quiet, everyone is getting real pissed off at you. The rookie teams immediately began to quieten down. But Jin shot back with a who cares what they think. Let them come at me, I will tear them up with my raisin gan. Upon hearing the yellow flash's famous jutsu, the people suddenly started questioning themselves whether this kid was as much a genius as his father. Well, they weren't far from it. Jean is as much of an idiot as his father. Kabuto then started talking about the chunin exams, but he caught Naruto's attention when he mentioned his nin info cards. But what really interested him was when Jean asked for information about Sabaka no Gara, Rock Lee and Namike's Naruto. HNN, so brother wants some information on me. Let's see if what he hears is what he wanted to hear. First up Rock Lee. He is a year older than you guys. Sensei is Mado Guy and his teammates being Niji Hyuga and Kuragane Kagami. Mission history, 20 D ranks completed, 12 C ranks completed. His Taijutsu skyrocketed in this year. The rest is nothing impressive. Next is Sabaka no Gara. Mission history, 8 C ranks completed and wow, a B ranked mission as a genin. And since he is a newcomer from a foreign country, I don't have much information, but it seems he returned from all of his missions without a scratch. The rookies gulped at the thought of a person returning from a B-ranked mission without a single injury. He was dangerous, and everyone knew it. Now, third is Namike's Naruto. He is your brother? Well, doesn't matter either ways. Says here, his mission record is WH what in the world? 8 C-ranked missions Kabuto started. Keep a smirk that isn't so impressive. But Kabuto continued. 11 B-ranked missions. Now that threw that back. Wait B-ranked missions? How could a gen in teams complete 11 B-ranked missions? Kiba shouted but again Kabuto ignored him and continued. S6A ranked missions. Teammates are Nara Shikamaru and Sai. Bounty history. Aoi Rokusho B ranked missing Nin. He traded in his head for 200,000 Rio. Momochi Zabuza. A ranked missing Nin. Traded his head for 1 million Rio. Jean widened his eyes at the name of the Demon of the Mist. His team had fallen back once Kakashi was caught by Zabuza in his water prison technique on their first C ranked. Mission to the wave. When the Hitaki had been caught. Jean was about to save his Nissan but a cut on his cheek from Zabuza's Mizu bunch and sent him running away with his team, mates. Kakashi however, managed to escape from the technique and when he returned to his team, he looked fairly disappointed at Jean. The mission was of course a failure, and Wave Country was dominated by Gato since. But Kabuto was not finished. Not by a long shot. He even traded in the head of Kagai Kimimaro who was the right-hand man of Orochimaru, the traitor Snake Sanin. Incredible, just amazing. His all-round stats are extremely high. Taijutsu, Ninjutsu, Gen but before the silver-haired Genin could finish, Naruto already snatched the card from him. The blonde looked through the info card before sending his fire chakra into the card, burning it. Your information is surprisingly detailed for a Genin. But it is wrong though, I did not trade in the bounty for the Kagaya. He did not have a body for me to trade in after I was done with him. Which leads us to the question, how would a Genin know I killed Orochimaru's right-hand man when it was not known throughout the ninja world? Unless Naruto glared at Kabuto. You were there? That sent Kabuto into panic mode. W what? That is impossible. How could I been there? I just got that information through through a reliable source. Naruto smirked. Well, it doesn't matter. I am just pissed off you brought all the attention to our team. It was true. Now everyone was staring at Naruto as if he was an S-ranked missing Nin planning to kill them. Then the Namike's eyes widened oh he's here. A second later, a large burst of smoke engulfed the front of the room and revealed a heavily scarred man wearing a bandana and trench coat flanked by numerous other chunins. 
Okay you maggots, quiet, I am Marino Ibiki, your proctor for the first test of the Chunin exam. And for those of you newcomers, welcome to the Chunin exam, also known as, hell. Naruto had to compliment the man for his intimidation methods. He was almost caught up in it as well. Almost. The exam started with relative silence before examiners began to expel several teams out of the classroom for cheating. The exam was simple. It was a written test with extremely difficult questions Jenins should not be able to answer. The answer to that was carefully hidden by several hints from Ibiki. The examinees are supposed to cheat. That is where the twist comes in. Examinees are supposed to cheat in a smart way so that even when the proctors know they are cheating, they let them go if it was a smart method. For example, the Hyugas, Niji and Hinata. It was absolutely obvious they were using their Byakugan if the veins bulging at the side of their heads was any evidence. The sand eye from the Sunanin was also quite visible as well. This kind of reconnaissance test was a walk in the park for Naruto. Ibiki looked at the room of Jenins. He could already see several of the dumber examinees leaning their heads towards their neighbors trying to look at their answers. These kind of people did not even deserve to be promoted to Chunin. But there was some potential in this year's Chunin exam. Like that blonde Namikaze. All he did was close his eyes for a moment, and when he reopened them, he began writing furiously at his paper. It wasn't a Dijitsu nor was there any trick involved. If it was a Jutsu, then his control must be perfect as Ibiki did not sense even a drop of chakra. And that was saying something for a sensor type shinobi like Ibiki. What he did not know was, Naruto did use a jutsu. One of his original in fact. Mind jack technique. A small knife made of chakra invisible to the naked eye was formed from the back of his head. It was connected to a thin thread of chakra linked to his head. The chakra knife moved around as if it had a life of its own and immediately stabbed the head one of the hurriedly writing examinees. But he did not scream. He showed no pain whatsoever. Naruto smirked as information and images ran past his eyes. The mind jack technique was a jutsu where Naruto connected his mind to the target's mind, therefore receiving his thoughts and memories for as long as the knife was connected. It caused no pain, no feeling of uncomfortableness and the target would have no idea that his brain was just jacked by Naruto. Thirty minutes later, the paper was completed, and Naruto sat back and relaxed. If the first exam was this easy, the Chunin exam would be a breeze. This is training area 44, also more affectionately known as the Forest of Death the purple-haired proctor declared. Naruto looked bored though. He had already been to this training area before. Both on his own and with his team. The forest was quiet, almost tranquil, making it an ideal location for training. Well, that and the fact numerous deadly beasts lay prowling in the shadows while they trained, forcing them to be alert at all times. The special jounin known as Anko Midarashi continued to explain the exam. How each team was to be given either a heaven or an earth scroll and they had to get the other scroll and make it to the tower in the middle of the forest in five days to pass. Jean chuckled and muttered way too easy that was a mistake as a kanai went zipping past his face, grazing his cheek. He was immediately shocked but then noticed the cold sensation of metal near his throat. It's the loudmouths that die first in my deadly forest she whispered before licking the blood Jin's wound. His initial arrogance forgotten, the QB vessel stood rooted to the ground as a shiver went down his spine. That was when a tongue slid by Anko's face, a kanai wrapped in it. The special jounin took the kanai and said with an obviously fake smile I don't advise sneaking up on me. People usually die when they do. A kusanin whose tongue belonged to merely smiled. Oh forgive me, I merely felt it appropriate to return the kanai that flew past my beautiful hair. Chuji interrupted the conversation, shouting what are we supposed to do for food? He asked a panic-stricken look on his normally apathetic chubby face. Anko grinned while well, the whole forest has plenty of food. I heard the saber-tooth liger, that is three meters long, is pretty tasty char-grilled. Although Chuji slightly drooled at the image of grilling a piece of liger meat, he paled at the thought of three meters long beasts. But that was okay. As half of the examinees paled themselves, Anko then continued, ushering teams to a covered booth where they collected their scrolls. Naruto, as the team leader, held on to their heaven scroll. As they stood in front of their assigned gate, Team 10 went over their battle plan. First off tracking, they had to search for a team with their counterpart scroll, that would be taken of by Sai with his ink drawings of eagles and rats. Next, they would either confront the team and defeat them, or steal the scroll form under their noses. This was pretty much the standard plan for everyone. Ten minutes into the forest, Naruto wiped the blood off Weasel, his butterfly knife, with the fallen enemy's shirt. They had found two Taki teams working together, with size ink rat, setting up traps in a small clearing. Naruto easily slipped through the traps and annihilated the two teams, not even giving any chance for resistance. Now Team 10 had a single heaven scroll, and two earth scrolls. This was too easy. Naruto signaled his team to come out. Now we will run a straight path through the forest to the tower. Any resistance met shall be eliminated swiftly. I intend for us to be the first team to pass, understood? Naruto asked. Two nods in the affirmative, and Team 10 moved out. They were halfway through the tower when they stumbled across something very interesting. For a Wagakure Genin teams gathered in one clearing, formulating a plan. The blonde mentally laughed. The six Takinin from before were not enough to satisfy his killing urge. Naruto's hands shook with anticipation and from the branch he and his team was standing on, he jumped towards the rock Nins, 
laughing manically. Taken by surprise, they barely had time to dodge as Naruto landed in their midst. The blonde was leaking killing intent like crazy, but one of the genin recognized him. H hey, he is the yellow flash's other son. That was when all hell broke loose. The rock nin jumped away to gain distance and half of them began forming hand seals while the other half prepared for combat, pulling out shuriken and kunai. Dotan, Dorio Dango. Earth Mausoleum Dumpling. Dotan, Yomi Numa. Swamp of the Underworld. Dotan, Gansetsukan. Rock Staff. Dotan, Ganchuri. Earth Pillar Prison. Dotan, Gon Trail. Cock Trail. Dotan, Doryodama. Mud Shot. The ground beneath Naruto suddenly turned into a swamp, with jagged spikes stabbing upwards. Naruto tried to jump out away but pillars of rock flew up trapping him in the swamp. He then had to deflect a staff thrown at him, while using a seal less Rapusho to block a chakra-enhanced ball of mud. But what shocked him was a gigantic lump of earth hurling towards him. But a bulb lit up in Naruto's head. The rock mean probably thought the last attack would finish me off, so they didn't think that the Dorio Dango would open a hole in the earth pillar prison. Soon, the lump of earth crashed into the pillars, and continued on towards Naruto. Right on, John, false darkness, a spear of lightning pierced the lump of earth, breaking it to several smaller pieces which allowed Naruto to jump on them and leap through the hole created by the Dorio Dango. The blonde turned to face the shocked IWA Shinobi. I believe it's my turn. Reappearing in front of them, Naruto sliced the nearest person's throat with sin and kicked two of them away. Dotan Doma, Earth Spear, one of them shouted and a blackened fist flew towards Naruto. Raitan, Yoro, Armor, a yellow aura covered Naruto as he caught the fist, and proceeded to shock the owned of the outstretched hand to death with the lightning chakra. Two dead, ten left. With a shout of Kanai Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, Kanai Shadow Clone, hundreds of Kanais flew towards the rock needs forcing them to block it with Dotan, Dora Kageshi, Earth Shore Return, where a large wall of earth shielded them formed the incoming mass of weapons. Another rock name was halfway through the hand seals for Dotan, Dori Yudin, Earth Dragon Bullet, but was suddenly immobilized before hearing a voice behind him, Kage main no jutsu success, and used the rock name's possessed body to punch his ally and kick another. Naruto noticed Shikamaru standing in the shadows of a tree, Nara. This is my fight, stay out of it. Shikamaru merely muttered troublesome and released his hold on the IWA Jinin. By now, the possessed shinobi had already been restrained with ninja wire by his teammates. The blonde growled and decided to pull out the big guns. Swiftly flipping out Sin and Weasel, he flew towards them, and stabbed two of them with deadly accuracy through their hearts, who were taken by surprise. Katan, Hibashira, Fire Pillar, and a pillar of flame surrounding Naruto flew upwards burning most of the enemies. Arg. A shout of pain resonating from the burnt IWA Shinbai. Those alive were covered in numerous third and second degree burns while the others were already dead. Those standing closest to Naruto burned to death. Jayahaha. Naruto laughed. He gripped two of the least injured one's neck and lifted them up. The two clawed Naruto's hands in a desperate attempt to have him release them but to no avail. Scream for me, trash. And he tightened his grip. The two shinobi's eyes almost popped out as their eyes, ears and nose bleed crimson red. And with a snap, their necks broke, and Naruto dropped them. They fell to the ground like a puppet with its strings cut. Naruto glanced at the remaining ones this is getting boring he sighed and stabbed his hidden knife into their head, through their skull and brain. Sai and Shikamaru watched the carnage with familiarity. It was of course not the first time Naruto had gotten this wild. The Namike stared at the blood on his hands in disgust. There wasn't a river anywhere near and he could not wipe it on the burnt clothing of the corpses. Week to week. Naruto roared. Anko's POV. It was only twenty minutes into the exam and the examinees was already going at it. Anko had already seen a giant boulder flying through the trees a spear of lightning stabbing from the forest, and strangely enough, a pillar of fire. Looks like Ibiki was right, this year's crop wasn't bad. Eno's POV, whatever was going on in the forest, she did not want to go near it. She and her team had already witnessed a pillar of flames and a spear of lightning in the air, these exams were dangerous, and she knew it. The ground was shaking a bit, from the Dorio Dango, after a great explosion was heard. The forest of death was dangerous. Team 10 was strolling through the forest at a casual speed. Naruto was already annoyed at not being able to defeat any strong opponents, he thought he would at least get a challenge, but so far, the Chunin exams did not impress him one bit. But the blonde didn't know how wrong he was. A wave of kunai flew towards them. This shocked all three of them. A trap? Not possible. Size ink birds and mice already combed the route to the tower. Any traps were already disabled and dismantled. And how could another genin team sneak up to Team 10, which was undoubtedly the strongest genin team in Kanoha, or even in the whole exam? The wave of kunai was deflected by an invisible barrier, although a slight blur in the air could be seen. That was Naruto's mastery of the wind element coming into play where he used the wind to deflect the weapons. Right after the wave of projectiles came a large snake actually somehow flying towards them, although a large, flat black tendril sliced it in half. The black blade interestingly enough came from the ground, or more accurately, from Shikamaru's shadow kage yaiba, shadow blade. The snake's blood splattered the soil as what remained of the reptile landed in a thud on the ground. 
Immediately Team Ten was on their toes, cautious and almost paranoid. Sai had already unsheathed his tanto while Shikamaru had twin kunais out. Naruto on the other hand summoned four Kage Bunshins and sent them into the forest, only for them all to somehow be dispersed all at once. The memory of the clones was sent back to Naruto. It proved valuable however short-lived it was. The last thing one of the clones saw was a golden colored eye with a black slit. Coo, 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 coo. The almost insane laughter echoed throughout the clearing not bad the owned of the voice finally showed himself and suddenly appeared opposite of Naruto. All three genin turned to face their enemy. The blonde could feel it. The twisted and sickening killing intent the man or woman was radiating. Naruto recognized him or her immediately. It was the almost creepy Kusanin from earlier. He or she was dangerous. That much Naruto could feel. Interesting. The man or woman brought up his or her hand gesturing come on Shikamaru gave a TCH and launched this to Kunai. The Kusanin immediately noticed the thin trail of shadow connecting the two Kunais to the Nara's shadow. Strangely enough, he or she did not dodge it. In fact he or she ran towards the Kunai, twisting his or her body and squeezed in between the two Kunai and the two strands of shadow. With a burst of chakra from his or her foot to the ground, he or she launched forward with twice the speed, a fist pulled back ready to smash it in the Nara's face. The Kusanin's attack was ruined, however, when a black and white claw almost tore his or her face off. He or she was forced to jump back, carefully watching his or her shadow, avoiding Shikamaru's shadow attacks. The clawed attack came from Sai's Ink Lion. Three of them stood in front of Team Ten, almost protectively. The Kusanin chuckled Did you think I could not sense you Naruto-kun? And blocked Weasel with her own kunai. Naruto who had tried sneaking up to her flinched, surprised he was caught. The blonde was confident, almost bordering arrogant of his stealth skills. But who was he kidding? Did he really believe he could sneak up on one of the Sanin, especially the infamously notorious Orochimaru? Of course Naruto knew the one they were fighting was the snake Sanin. Who else could summon such a large snake and actually make it fight for him? Still, he must be here for a reason, and no matter what it might be, Naruto and his team was in danger. And if they would be in a deadly situation, the blonde would escape, abandon his team and escape. It might be cowardly, but against an S-ranked opponent, it was every man for himself. However, strangely enough, Orochimaru was not fighting with his full capabilities. The snake Sanin could easily erase all of them with a snap of his fingers. But why isn't he? A motive he is here for a reason. For some twisted and evil plot. Orochimaru instantly pushed Naruto back with his superior strength gained over years of training. Naruto could only think, what the hell just happened? He had channeled wind chakra into weasel, a friggin' kunai shouldn't be able to stop it. That only proved the mastery Orochimaru had over chakra. Naruto glanced at his teammates. Sai was already in the middle of conjuring more ink beasts while Shikamaru was halfway through the seals for a jutsu. Should he run while his teammates distracted Orochimaru? A second later, dozens of thin black spikes pierced the ground where Orochimaru was a moment ago, while large ink hawks intercepted Orochimaru in the air where he jumped. The Sanin cleaved the in half with the same kunai while laughing. Is this all your team can achieve, Naruto-kun? Seems like this is all the dead last is able to accomplish. Though Orochimaru had to admit Team 10 was putting up quite a fight, Naruto narrowed his eyes. He knew Orochimaru was trying to provoke him into facing him, and it worked. Now the Sanin just made this personal. Growling, two cage bunchins poofed into existence next to the original. He quickly formed some hand signs you to keep him busy his two teammates seeing this, nodded. At once, the three Naruto's formed hand seals simultaneously while Shikamaru and Sai distracted Orochimaru with shadow spikes, tendrils and ink beasts. Naruto smirked, here goes nothing. My strongest jutsu, high, A-ranked, bordering on S, rank technique. The first clone finished his hand seals katan, hiria enti no jutsu, fire dragon flame emperor. The original finished his hand seals futan, furia kazeo no jutsu, air dragon wind king. The second clone finished his hand seals raitan, raria kaminari ko, lightning dragon thunder lord. Three massive western dragons made out of fire, wind and lightning appeared out of seemingly nowhere, stared down at their tiny prey, orochimaru, before fusing together to form a gigantic firestorm with lightning bolts flying around it. The massive amount of heat and light forced Orochimaru to divert his entire attention to Naruto's jutsu. My god the snake Sanin could not help but mutter in awe. A jutsu of insane proportions. Naruto glared at the snake Sanin. Don't underestimate me, fucker. Three elemental dragon storm. Sai and Shikamaru who had already witnessed the destruction this jutsu was capable of, cleverly retreated leaving Orochimaru alone to face it. Said Sanin shook himself off his awe and hurriedly performed the hand seals needed for Kuchios. Kuchios no jutsu. Summoning technique. A second later, fire, wind, and lightning enveloped the clearing tearing apart, incinerating everything within its area of effect. Let's go, hurry! Naruto shouted over to his teammates, wishing to use his jutsu at least as a distraction in order to escape. And with that, Team 10 escaped the horror known as Orochimaru. It took an hour for Naruto's S-ranked ninjutsu to disperse due to depletion of the chakra the blonde used. When the chaos settled, what was left was a dead snake, half the size of Manda. 
Team 10 was the second team to arrive in the tower. First being the San team. Shikamaru and even Sai was still a bit shaken up from battling and escaping one of the legendary San Nin, Orochimaru. Shikamaru was the first one to speak since the incident. Oh, was that Oro Orochimaru we just fought off? He asked, hands still trembling. Do not mistake that as a weakness. Most genins would have pissed their pants in the presence of Orochimaru's malevolent aura. Don't worry about it. Naruto replied I am going to report this to the Hokage stay here. And the blonde walked off. Of course, Naruto had no intention of reporting anything to his father. This is fun this is really fun. I have never felt such an adrenaline rush before. Fighting for your life against an undoubtedly superior opponent. The Chunin exam really is interesting. Time skip to first match of the preliminaries cause I forgot the third speech. The Chunin hopefuls all stood across each other, staring at each other, trying to find weaknesses. Tension was high in the room. A preliminary round was decided as many teams passed. Too many. Three Kanoha teams made it through, a single Suna team and one Odo team. Making a total of 15 examinees, Naruto scanned the genins, noting their skills and weaknesses. The puppeteer from Suna, his weakness would probably be either Taijutsu, or heavy ninjutsu. The Oto Nin with the contraption on his arm, would most likely favor Taijutsu, so on and so forth. And surprisingly, Danzo was here, standing near his father, and was staring at him. The old warhawk smirked. Naruto already knew what he was supposed to do here, as his sensei had instructed him to complete crush the competition. Not like that was not what he was planning in the first place. Now let the preliminaries begin. The Yandame shouted as silence descended. Names were to be picked randomly and two enemies would fight each other. The victor would be granted the right to proceed to the finals although Minato had volunteered Naruto to fight twice because of the imbalance in numbers. Two people held their breaths as their names were shown on the black screen. Namike's Jean vs. Hyuga Hinata. Gasps were heard from the Kanoha teams as everyone knew the shy Hyuga liked the Namikes. What would happen now that they were forced to fight for the chance for promotion? Jean said nothing and jumped down to the arena. Though he was inwardly laughing. Hinata loved him. This would be the most easiest matchup ever. She would never bear to attack her beloved crush, right? This would be a walk in the park. However, the Hyuga was having an internal turmoil herself. If she fought and lost, it might cause Jean to lose interest in her, and it would also bring shame to the clan. If she fought and won, it will cause Jean to hate her but on the other hand bringing glory to the clan, Hinata sighed. As much as she hated the bratty Jinchuriki, she would have to throw this match. She jumped down as well facing the love of her life. J. Jin Kun. Oh let's have a G great match. The Namikaze nodded. The judge, a sickly man named Gekka Hate shouted Hajime. Hinata walked towards Jean to shake his hand and Jean did as well. Or did he? He grabbed her outstretched hand and landed a quick blow to her gut. This showed a new side to the hero of Kanoha. Still gripping Hinata's hand, Jean continued attacking her, punches and kicks flew towards her. As much as she wanted to just juke in the, she endured. Finally, Jean lost his grip and Hinata fell back, unconscious. Everyone was looking at Jean in disgust, even Kushina who came to see her son, note the singular, to compete, albeit only slightly. The only one who was not affected was Minato, who was clapping, and Gara, just because he wasn't capable of emotion. Naruto was gripping the railing, his fist clenching onto the metal, leaving an imprint of his hand on it. He did not know why he was angered, considering he already threw all affection from the Hugo way. Maybe it was because of the blatant dirty act his brother just performed. Gekka hate looked shock. A sign of goodwill from the girl was taken advantage of from a boy she liked. This was disgusting. It sickened him to know this kind of people existed. But nonetheless, he was an impartial judge and announced the boy winner. Show Sha. Namike's Jean. The other teams watched in silent contempt and distaste. No words can be used to describe what kind of rotten being Jean was. The Namikaze walked back to his team, smirking and arrogant. Kakashi looked at him with both disappointment and anger. This was not what he spent the last six months teaching him. The next two fighters were quickly randomly picked. Chuji Akimichi vs. Sai. Naruto looked on in interest. His root team mate was fighting the fat Akimichi? Intriguing. Chuji looked nervous at having to fight one of the people who arrived in the tower in 30 minutes. Although a bribe from his sensei turned him around, he was even extremely enthusiastic. Sai looked at his opponent with apathy knowing the chubby boy had no chance against himself. But he had been taught to never underestimate his opponent, and never show mercy. This pig would have to suffer a bit. Hajime. The starting signal was given and the Akimichi quickly used his clan's famous jutsu. Buben Baika no jutsu. Partial multi-size, he shouted and his hands enlarged causing it to stretch and promising pain when hit with it. Chuji went ahead and tried to punch Sai. In which the root Nin responded with a mass of ink snakes. The snakes wrapped themselves all the way around Chuji's outstretched arm biting and constricting it at the same time. Yelping in pain, the Akimichi quickly dispelled his technique allowing his hand to return to normal. Cradling his arm, Chuji yelled at Sai. You bastard, that wasn't fair. Sai raised an eyebrow but did not reply. He wouldn't bother himself with such an inferior opponent. The Akimichi glared at Sai before shouting Baika no Jutsu. 
multi-size, and his already round body, increased in body size giving him an extremely round appearance. He then followed up with Nikudin Sisha. Human bullet tank, Chuji tucked his limbs into his clothes and propelled himself towards Sai, said Root Jenin smirked and jumped out of the rolling ball's way. Chuji again rolled towards Sai in which he again dodged. This happened multiple times until the Akimichi lost all strength due to chakra depletion. The onlookers gaped at the rather idiotic strategy of the Akimichi. Just roll and pray the opponent is too dumb to move away. Gekko Hei deadpan for a while before shaking his head in disappointment and declared Sai the winner. The other examinees were diapented. The first two matchup was so boring it seemed the other battles won't be as exciting as they thought. The other genin had no time to think as the next two contestants was already chosen. Zaku Abumi vs. Shino Aburaim. FY Zaku's arm was not broken as they did not encounter Sasuke that prick is dead. Okay, I don't really want to write this match cause you all know how Shino defeated him, so let's skip to the main attraction. Namike's Naruto vs. Inazuka Kiba. Immediately the Inazuka cheered Yada. Looks like we got lucky Akamaru. His dog canine companion barked happily. Naruto stared at him let's just get this over with he muttered. But Kiba's enhanced Inazuka senses heard him. Looks like you are looking forward to your defeat, dead last. Naruto ignored him and jumped down to the arena. Hurry up already. Kiba growled but complied. You better be ready for an ass whooping of a lifetime. He shouted. Naruto merely shook his head. Kiba was an embarrassment to the village the proctor looked at both of them. Ready? Both nodded. Let the fourth match of the preliminaries begin. Kiba immediately ran towards Naruto, intent on ending with a single punch. From how Akamaru was merely standing at the side, Kiba wanted to fight Naruto himself. Just as the Inazuka was about to swing his fist at Naruto, he was launched backwards by a kick from Naruto. Kiba smashed against the wall, coughing out blood. That took everyone by surprise except his team. Especially the other Konoha Genins. They all knew Naruto was the dead last how did he manage that? The Inazuka got up, surprisingly, and wiped the blood off his chin. That was a lucky shot, Naruto, and you know it. I didn't think I would have to use this against the dead last, Kiba thought, narrowing his eyes. He knelt down on one knee and formed a hand seal. Gijiu Ninpu, Shikyaku no Jetsu, Beast Mimicry, for legs technique, chakra surged through his body, rearranging his body structure, becoming more animal-like. Let's get wild. Kiba shouted as he charged towards Naruto, more wary this time. Said blonde looked at the Inazuka boringly. That's fine. I need to let off some steam as well. Naruto leaned forward and with quick burst of chakra from his foot, he launched forward and clotheslined the oncoming Kiba, but he did not end it with that. Just before Kiba hit the ground, Naruto grabbed his neck with his left hand and gave a total of 13 quick punches to Kiba's chest and stomach area with what looked like only a single punch to others. Before Naruto roundhouse kicked Kiba's face, the Inazuka flying backwards again. Asuma gaped, he was sure that Kiba's taijutsu was second to none in their generation, yet the Sarutobi looked at Danzo, wondering what the hell was that old man teaching his students. Naruto stared at Kiba's unmoving body. Pathetic he muttered and headed towards the stairs. W wait a minute Dobe who said you could go? The weak voice came from Kiba who was slowly getting up. His head was bleeding, and from the looks of it he was just about ready to collapse. I am not done with you yet. Naruto respected his determination, but what he was doing was just mere persistence. Kiba reached into his weapons pouch and pulled out a soldier pill. He popped it in his mouth and immediately felt his strength returning. The Inazuka cracked his knuckles now I am ready I am going to end this right now. And again, Kiba ran forward but this time he jumped and spun in midair. Take this. Jujin Taijutsu, Tsuga, a whirling tornado of claws and fangs was formed, heading towards Naruto. Naruto noticed Akamaru still standing to the side and a devilish plan formed in his head. A second later, Kiba's Tsuga slammed into Naruto, and the blonde flew away a trail of blood following. The Inazuka stopped spinning and landed on his feet. How was Tiwa wait? What the? A Akamaru, what was thought to be Naruto was actually his canine companion Akamaru, now bleeding through its mouth with several rough gashes on its body. This shocked everyone. Shikamaru immediately knew what happened. Naruto you evil bastard. Kiba ran towards his dog and cradled the broken and battered body of Akamaru. Akamaru. H help. Somebody. Hate ran towards Kiba. If you call for help, that is considered an immediate forfeit. I don't care. Just send a medic now. The Inazuka shouted, tears dripping down his chin. The proctor nodded and signaled for a medic name. Because Inazuka Kiba requested for medical assistance, it is considered an immediate for he was interrupted by laughter. Jayahahaha. How's that for tasting your own medicine? Naruto laughed, standing at where Akamaru originally stood. Kiba saw Naruto and ran towards him. What did you do, bastard? He shouted. The blonde smile was lost as he backhanded Kiba. What do you mean what I did? You were the one who attacked your own dog. I merely helped you with a kawarini. Realization descended upon everyone, using an opponent's attack to your own advantage. They did not know whether to call that despicable or genius. With that said, Naruto returned to his teammates, leaving Kiba with a dying dog and a bruised ego. 
The next matchup was quickly randomly picked as Akamaru was carried away and Kiba followed. Nara Shikamaru vs Sabaka no Tamari. The Nara looked his opponent and was about to complain about how troublesome it was when he noticed his sensei was in the room as well. Not forgetting that, he jumped down to the arena without a word. Tamari had a more flashy descend as she shunched him down. This guy was that Namike's teammate. It was better not to underestimate him, and without delay, she revealed he battle fan. Shikamaru had already deduced she was a wind user seeing that large metallic object on her back and the fact she was from Sunagakir, a village renowned for their skilled futon specialists. Hajime brought them out of their stupor, and they both readied for battle. Naruto looked at Tamari, noticing her shapely curves, hardly hidden by her tight battle kimono and her before he thought anything else, he decided to look away quickly. Damned hormones, Naruto is a guy too, you know? Tamari started the battle and waved her battle fan. Kamaitashi no Jutsu. Sickle Weasel, which Shikamaru jumped away, only receiving a single scratch on his arm. He quickly analyzed the situation, and instantly, multiple plans and scenarios were formed. The Sunanin's technique was powerful and versatile, but the only drawback was its speed. It took too long for Tamari to swing that gigantic folding fan, and in that moment Shikamaru attacked. Kageba, Shadow Blade, the black blade flew towards Tamari but was blocked by her fan. Shikamaru smirked Kajinui, Shadow Stitching, several tendrils branched from the Shadow Blade and wrapped itself around Tamari's battle fan. W what the, she exclaimed and had no choice but to abandon her weapon before the tendrils crawled onto her. Shikamaru smirk now that I have your weapon, what are you going to do? Tamari glared at him before smirking I still have backups, and reached behind her, pulling out two normal size paper fans. The Nara looked annoyed I should have known or did I? Tamari widened her eyes as she suddenly became immobile. Seems like you have never heard of the Nara clan before, my clan specialize in immobilization. Tamari looked down and noticed her shadow was connected to his. Tamari glared at him. Shikamaru smirked and put his hands together. Tamari, forced to follow his movements, did as well. With a snap, he broke her two fans. I don't want to do this but Kaige could be sure Bari no Jutsu, shadow neck bind, a hand formed from Tamari's shadow snaked up her body and wrapped its fingers around her neck. Give up or I will snap your neck. Tamari was reluctant to but once she felt the fingers tightening around her neck, she gave up. Hate nodded and Shikamaru released his Jutsu. Winner, Nara Shikamaru. The Nara sighed Mendak before noticing Danzo glaring at him. He waved a sign of apology before returning to his teammates. Upon returning to his teammates, Naruto noted him with annoyance. You could have done much better Shikamaru took a moment to look at the Namikaze before muttering well she is a girl. The screen again went through the names of the remaining contestants. A second later it stopped. Sabaka no Gara vs. Kintsuchi. Gara looked at Kin with distaste before he shunned shine down. His opponent was a little weak but if he could get blood, it was good. The sound Nin jumped down and readied herself, her right hand already in her weapon's pouch. Hajime. Hate shouted and Kin immediately threw Senbans at Gara, which were easily blocked by his sand shield. The bell attached to the Senban had no chance to ring as Gara's sand enveloped the needle and was hurled back at her. Kin skillfully caught the Senban by the bell, careful not to let it ring near her. Naruto narrowed his eye. That sand shield was interesting. He did not sense any chakra coming from the sand Nin, but the sand rose up to defend Gara. It had its own chakra? It was an auto-defense, most likely. The Jinchuriki looked at Kin before raising his hand. His sand rose and flew towards Kin and enveloped her whole body without mercy. Sabaka Q, Desert Coffin, as he tightened his hand, Kin yelled out in pain. Shit, he's going to, Hei thought, but before he could do anything, Gara formed a fist. Sabaka Soso. -so. Desert Funeral. The sand surrounding Kin imploded and crushed her. Blood dripped out from the floating sand. Minato immediately stood up. Shit. He turned to face Baki Hei, San Jonin. Our village is not responsible for any deaths caused by other villages. This sound Nin's death is on your village's hands, not ours. Baki glanced at the sound Jonin who shook his head. The sand Jonin turned back to the Hokage I understand. Our village will take complete responsibility for my student's mistake. Minato nodded good. He ushered someone to clean up the mess and signaled for the preliminary rounds to continue. Again, the screen flashed through Tei remaining contestants' names and it stopped. Namike's Naruto vs. Dosa Kinuta. Looks like it's my turn again. Naruto muttered before jumping down to the arena. Dosa did the same without saying anything. The Namikaze was already pretty excited from Gara's match. The sight of that much raw blood Naruto shuddered. Hate looked at both of them I will repeat the rules again. There will be no killing. Now Hajime. Dosu unveiled his melody arm and ran towards Naruto. Immediately, Naruto released a large amount of killing intent. So heavy that it affected all the other genins and even some chunin in the room. The killing intent stopped Dosu dead in his tracks. Considering the killing intent was directed at the sound Nin, it was normal when he dropped to his knees, his legs losing all strength and unable to support him. Dosu started sweating bullets and was shaking in fear. Naruto calmly walked towards him as his overwhelming presence increased in pressure. The Namike slowly took out a paintbrush and after cutting himself, he used the blood to draw a seal on Dosu's forehead. 
After it was done, the blonde whispered Chakra Fuin, Kai. Chakra seal. Activate. A second later, Dosa screamed in pain. Multiple runes emerged from the base seal on his forehead and covered his entire body, trailing his chakra coils. The screaming stopped as Dosa lost conscious. Hate could only wonder what the hell happened when he declared Naruto the winner. Everyone was looking at Naruto, wondering what he just did. What he did was simple. Naruto merely sealed off Dosa's chakra, forcibly making him a civilian without any ability to summon or feel any chakra for his whole life. A day off was given to Team 10 as a reward because all three managed to advance to the third round of the Chunin exams. Naruto did not want to go home that night. He was actually afraid of what his father would do to him when he got home. Naruto could still remember the cold dark glare his father gave him after they were dismissed. Him being paired with Jin for the final exam was both the best and worst thing that could happen. Naruto could humiliate the genius in front of Konoha but if he won, the memory of Minato landing blow after blow on Naruto's immobile body came to mind. But boy was he in for a surprise when Danzo approached him the next day. Keep quiet and follow me. Was all the old war hawk said before disappearing. Naruto had already had this happen quite too many times and learned how to follow his sensei. They reached the east wall and stopped. A chunin was standing guard and when he saw Danzo, the chunin bowed. Danzo turned to Naruto who was behind him. I shall give you a privilege that I have never given anyone. You will be the first non-root affiliated shinobi to enter the root ANBU HQ. Before Naruto could reply, Danzo turned to the chunin and nodded. The root Nin proceeded to tap a few portions of the massive wall before forming a hand sign. A quiet rumble and a part of the wall sank into the floor, revealing a doorway and a set of stairs that led downwards. Danzo quickly descended down the stairs and Naruto followed him tightly. The doorway closed up immediately. The stairway was dark and damp with only a few torches along the walls giving limited illumination. After walking for what felt like ten minutes, a bright light was seen at the end. They walked into the light and revealed a large dojo with dozens of shinobi both young and old training. Welcome to Root Headquarters, Naruto. The blonde surveyed the scene with slight interest. I told you Danzo, I will not join Root and that is final, said Root Commander chuckled. But Naruto, I am not asking you to join us Naruto raised an eyebrow at that. No I am asking you to lead us, a deafening silence. The training Root ninjas stopped what they were doing and watched their leader. What? Naruto loudly exclaimed. Even the cold, apathetic Namikaze could not help but be shocked. Bet that threw you guys off. Danzo smiled yes. I as the current commander of the ANB unit Root proclaim you. Namikaze Naruto as the new leader of Root. The blonde stared at Danzo incredulously B but I can't. I wait this is a trick isn't it? I don't know what you are planning but, Danzo frowned. Let's face it Naruto. I am getting old you know I am 81 this year I have never appointed a successor nor have I thought about one. I always thought I would be able to reign over Root until I have acquired the position of Hokage but there is just not enough time. And you, Namikaze Naruto, is by all means my true successor. The Namikaze looked down the floor, thinking about what his sensei just said. Sure I have taught Shikamaru and Sai as well, but you are my true apprentice. I have taught you everything I know. Danzo continued, your dream is to be the strongest shinobi in the world right? With the help of Root, you can achieve that dream. Lead Root, and conquer Konoha. Rid this village of its tyrannic ruler, Namikaze Minato. Danzo reached into his robe and fished out a golden emblem, diamond in shape that had the ANBU symbol on it. This is the Root emblem. It signifies the holder as the Root commander. Take it, Naruto. The blonde stared at the golden emblem before reaching out and received it from Danzo. At once, all the ANBU in training appeared before Naruto and knelt on one knee. All hail Naruto-sama. Naruto stared at the root means I understand. He tightened his grip on the emblem. I shall become Hokage and become the strongest shinobi the world will ever see. That that is a promise. Danzo nodded in acknowledgement. Now let's move on to your training for the next month. Meanwhile at the Namake's mansion, with Jean. Well, go pack your bag son. Me and Jiraiya Sensei will be taking you away for some intense training for the next month. Minato said excitedly. Jean could only groan in annoyance. Ah, uh, come on dad, I don't want to train. I am going to the third exam aren't I? Why do I need more training? The Yandame only smiled there's nothing wrong in training more than what's needed. But if you don't want to, we don't have to train all the time. Jean grinned in return, okay dad. Minato grinned back and ruffled Jin's hair. That's my boy, Jiraiya Sensei and I will be teaching you how to summon the toads for battle. And also more importantly. The usage of that little furball's chakra. Which is correct? Me and Jiraiya, or Jiraiya and me? At that moment, the infamous Gama Sanin flew in through the window. You ready kid? He asked Jean. The Jinchuriki took a moment to absorb the question definitely, Erosenin. I know, you guys don't like author's notes in the middle of the story, I just don't want to forget putting in the A slash N at the bottom when I'm finished. Anyways, I think that calling Jiraiya Erosenin is a little obnoxious and I kinda gag whenever I see Naruto disrespect one of my favorite characters like that. Jiraiya frowned at that. Don't call me that brat. Be more respectful like your dad. Minato laughed at the two's interaction. He picked that up from Kushina you know? The frog hermit pouted like mother like son, huh? Speaking of annoying brats, 
Where's Kushina? Jiraiya asked. Oh, she's in the kitchen making lunch. Kushina was really happy when she saw Jean come back unharmed. The Yandam answered. Jean interrupted their conversation. Of course I would be unharmed after following Dad's map. The Jinchuriki puffed up his chest, giving a self-satisfied smirk. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow. Map? Minato grinned. Yep, I gave my son the map of training ground 44 and on it, I marked the safest and also the fastest route to the tower. It would have only taken a day, but I don't know how Jean reached the tower in three days. The other teams couldn't have confronted his team, because of all the beware of extremely violent beasts warning signs I put along the route. Jiraiya frowned. Minato, how could you have done that? I thought that Saratobi sensei always emphasized unfairness and equality. How could you help your son cheat? The blonde shrugged. A ninja is supposed to use every tool at his disposal. A map is merely a tool for Jean to succeed. The white-haired hermit sighed. Minato, there isn't a shortcut for everything. The Chunin exams is not only a chance for Jenins to become Chunin. It is also a lesson, a big lesson for both the failures and those who succeeded. How would Jean learn anything if you help him to cheat? Jean looked at Jiraiya incredulously. What's the big deal, Erosenin? I advanced to the third exam. It's all that matters. Jiraiya let out a deep breath of disappointment. It's not the same, Jean. Both of you just don't understand. Meet me at the northern gate. We will travel from there to Jin's training spot. With that said, Jiraiya went out the window, disappearing. Minato and Jean stared at the open window both wondering what was wrong with their favorite white-haired pervert today. Two weeks into training, Kuchios no Jutsu. Jean shouted. A tiny green-colored toad, a quarter the size of his palm appeared. Damn it, I am already putting lots of my chakra in the Jutsu, but still, I can't summon any toad bigger than this tiny little thing, said toad merely narrowed its eyes and hit Jin's face with its unnaturally long tongue. Jiraiya stood by the side, shaking his head in exasperation. Minato had already left, claiming he was going to bring back notes for Jean from the mansion. Even a fool could tell the Yandame was quickly becoming more and more frustrated at Jin's complete incompetence. For the last time, you have to reach within yourself and summon as much chakra as you can. Jiraiya said. Jean only grabbed his head in confusion. That's what I have been trying to do for the last two weeks. The toad sage pinched the bridge of his nose. Was this kid really Minato's child? He could swear the blonde was much more talented and easier to teach. Clang! The sound of metal hitting metal resonated throughout the wood-covered walls. A root jounin wielding a odachi was locked in combat with a smaller opponent. With a flash of silver, the root jounin was knocked away but landed on his feet safely. Naruto was currently attempting to fend off five jounins at the same time only using a tsuruji. Think Orochimaru's Kuzanagi but the hilt is a traditional katana hilt. Sometimes they would attack one by one, sometimes they would attack all together, leaving Naruto hard-pressed to block all their attacks. The five jounin nodded simultaneously before jumping towards him, each holding a sharp weapon, two katanas, Tanto, Odachi, and Itachi. The training was supposed to let him learn how to deal with multiple-pronged attacks, how to deal with different weapons, and how to kill a comrade without remorse. Naruto let loose a breath and with a quick surge of chakra, he flew into their midst. Five quick strikes and blood splattered the walls. Clap, clap, clap. Naruto looked towards the source of the clapping. Danzo stood by the side admiring Naruto's handiwork. Good. Very good. The blonde stabbed the Tsuruji into the floor. The blood dripping from the cold hard metal blade to the wooden floors. This is wrong. I previously had no object killing your men. But I have been killing five of them every day. Altogether, I have already killed seventy root jounin. Do you really have the means to replace them? Naruto asked. Danzo looked at the blonde do not worry about pawns. They are merely sacrificial pieces. Naruto narrowed his eyes you know, you are starting to sound like a certain Sanin. The old warhawk raised an eyebrow please do not compare me to Orochimaru. He derives pleasure from killing and murder of innocents, I only do what I do out of necessity. Naruto frowned. And killing your subordinates is necessary? To help with your growth, yes? It is a necessary sacrifice. Danzo replied monotonously. The blonde eyed his sensei then turned away with a TCH. Third week into training, Jean stood in the horse stance. His face was a look of concentration before he formed several hand seals. Pig, dog, rooster, monkey, sheep. Kuchios no jutsu. A plume of smoke appeared. A loud croak. The smoke dispersed to reveal an extremely small toad with its tail still behind. How can this be? Jean yelled at the top of his lungs. Jiraiya who was leaning against the tree, asleep, opened one eye lazily. No matter how untalented Jean was, that had to be a limit. Minato clapped great job, son. Just a bit more, you are so close. He complimented, donning a rather fake smile before moving towards Jiraiya. Sensei, is this normal? The white-haired hermit sighed what do you mean? The jutsu or your son? The blonde squirmed a little both. Could the QB be interfering with his summoning, or could the jutsu be malfunctioning? Jiraiya sighed again that's not possible. In fact, QB should be helping him with summoning. The additional chakra gain from the fox should be a boost. The Yandame looked down before brightening up. 
Sensei, do you think it's time we train Jean to use that? Jiraiya looked interested. Yes, maybe it is time. Squelch. Naruto stabbed his Tsuruji even further in his last opponent's gut. This one was quite challenging, he must have been a Kenjutsu specialist. He dragged the sword downwards, narrowly missing the crotch by a few inches before he dragged out the blade forcefully, his opponent's blood and gore splattering the floor and Naruto's body. The body fell down with a thud. Naruto raised his blood-covered hand and brought it near his mouth. He always wondered what the blood of others would taste like but before he could sate his curiosity, a root messenger appeared by the door. Naruto-sama, Danzo-sama wishes to see you. Naruto looked at his blood-covered clothes understood. Tell him I will be there in five minutes. I have to change into fresher clothing. The messenger bowed high and left. Five minutes later, Naruto was donning a black-colored standard shinobi uniform. That was he always wore since arriving in Roots HQ. He opened the door to Danzo's room without waiting for permission and sat down on the tatami mat. The root commander was already long used to it. Danzo stared straight at the Sid Naruto. You have completed your Kenjutsu training. For the rest of the week you can either rest or train in whatever you want. But first, I have a reward for you, for killing a 104 root jounins thus far. Naruto looked surprised. 104? What about the the warhawk frown the only one you did not kill you maimed? The blonde could remember him. Wore a blank mask with the kanji for fire on the forehead. He was quite skilled in what Naruto liked to call, fancy footwork. The blonde severed his spine after getting bored of the root jounin and prancing around him. Anyways, here is the reward from behind Danzo pulled out a rather large scroll. Naruto received it with both hands and delicately opened it up. His eyes widened. T this is Dash. Jean stood up, confused at what he was looking at. He was apparently in a sewer of some sort. The Jinchuriki rubbed his head in confusion, wondering just why in the world Erosenin pushed him off a cliff. The last thing he could remember was falling through the ravine. Grumbling about how to get back at Jiraiya, he suddenly stopped and turned his head towards the end of the corridor which had a strange red glow, pulsing as if seducing him to move towards it. Slowly, Jean walked towards the red light at the end of the corridor, was an immense room, and on the other side of the room, was a gigantic cage. Jean looked at the cage in curiosity, wondering whether Kanoha kept a gigantic pet in its sewers. Walking forward, he was suddenly flung back by an enormous amount of a mixture of killing intent and demonic chakra. From the darkness of the cage, two eyes appeared. Grotesque red eyes with the slitted pupils. A large mouth opened. You dare disturb my slumber. With a roar so fierce, Jean almost peed his pants. Stuttering in fear, Jean managed to ask a barely understandable WW who ARYOU. The red eyes brightened, as if in amusement. I am the nine-tailed bijou, QB no Kitsune. Tremble before my presence, mortal, for I am the ruler of Makai, emperor of hell. Of course the fox was lying. The ruler of Makai was an ancient demon, Beelzebub. One of the original archangels who rebelled was Satan, and the Emperor of Hell or also known as the Lord of the Afterlife was the Shinigami himself. But humans did not know that. Jean was near tears, as the demonic visage of Kyubi was now fully in view. Slick red fur covered its body and nine massive tails swung back and forth behind the demon. It wasn't known very much, but Kyubi is actually a very good judge of character. One look, and it could see all the good and bad traits of the person. Kyubi carefully analyzed its vessel. Greed, sloth, pride, anger, envy, what a sinful human containing five of the seven sins. Somehow, Jean regained his lost confidence. His somewhat slow brain put things together and finally figured out the nine-tailed demon in front of him was the QB sealed within him. And for some stupid reason, because Jean thought the fox was his prisoner, he could order it around. He hey. Stupid fox. Since you are living inside of me, why not pay me some rent from now on? Jean declared with a smirk, thinking he got the fox. Red eyes widened in anger while QB's massive body began trembling in wrath. Various thoughts of death and destruction flew through his mind. The thought of ripping this insolent human limb from limb could barely sate its bloodlust. Seeing the trembling QB, Jin's smirk grew even more as his face could be the very definition of arrogance and conceit. How dare you, how dare you? Raya! QB roared in its fury. The water shook in slight waves, and the walls around them started shaking. A claw flew towards the cage's opening, and it almost reached Jin's head before stopping. Damn this seal! Mark my words, human you shall regret your words. I will tear you apart. I will chew you into bits. You want chakra? You will have more than your fragile human body can take. A wave of dark red flew through the cage slamming itself into Jin's body. He was forcefully ejected from his mind. In the real world, red chakra tendrils burst from Jin's seal. As if spinning a cocoon, the tendrils began wrapping itself around Jin's body. Minato and Jiraiya who was watching on the cliff, was starting to worry before a surge of demonic chakra brought their attention to Jin. A deep red chakra surrounded him before a scream of pain erupted from him. They could see his body literally breaking down. Pieces of skin started to burn off, muscles started rupturing. Demonic chakra was actually a double-edged sword, for both demons and humans. Demons could go berserk from overuse of demonic chakra, like Shikaku. And humans' body would destroy itself from too much demonic chakra. 
exactly what was happening with Jean, the Jinchuriki quickly fell unconscious from the pain. Seeing his son's eyelids fall, Minato yelled his name, and using the Horatian tag he had placed on Jean before, he reappeared beside Jean, grabbing his hand, Minato and Jean reappeared back on the cliff with a yellow flash. The Yandame gripped Jin's shoulders yelling his name, before pulling back his hands, the demonic chakra burning his palms. Jiraiya was more calm and collected than his student. Observing Jin's condition, he went through all the possible solutions, their drawbacks and results. Selecting one of the many sealing jutsus, he went through some hand seals. This fuin jutsu was one he created with Minato. They figured the possibility Kyubi might forcibly shove Jin full of its chakra, breaking his body. Hence, they worked together and created a jutsu that would be able to completely seal off Kyubi's influence. Temporarily, of course. Akuma Hosodo Bunri no Jutsu. Demon Ho Separation Technique, Jiraiya yelled out. A burst of chakra came from his palm before a mirror of Jin's seal appeared on it. The seal glowed red and the runes around it fused together and formed a new set of runes. The Gamasanan slammed his palm onto Jin's gut and the seal on his palm combined with Jin's. The point of the Jutsu was to effectively cancel out Jin's seal without releasing the trapped beast. Almost instantly, most of the red chakra surrounding Jin flew back into the seal while the rest dispersed into the air. Jiraiya stood before Jin and Minato. The Jinchuriki was a bloody mess. Because the connection to Kyubi was cut off, it meant his speedy regeneration was disabled temporarily. With his skin still missing, Jean looked like a bloody carcass, messily skinned by a psychopath, whereas Minato was nursing his burnt palm. Jiraiya could see Minato wincing at his palms, a sign of chakra poisoning. He had to get them to the hospital but first, the white-haired Sanin formed several hand seals and sealed Jean into a timeless sphere. For the Jinchuriki, his time would stop within the sphere. Sighing, Jiraiya heaved the sphere onto his shoulders and got Minato to his feet. Why couldn't anything go right with Jean? Kuchios no Jutsu. A massive plume of smoke appeared out of thin air. As the smoke dispersed, black beady eyes stared at the man, no boy, in front below him. The last person to summon him was the Amigeku boy, Hanzo, was it? Yes, Hanzo he summoned him right before he was defeated in battle by the Rinnegan user. The boy immediately went down on one knee. Sensho-sama. I humbly request your permission to summon the noble Salamander clan in battle. Day of the Chunin exams. Location, arena. It was the day of the final Chunin exam. To many, it was just a form of entertainment. For some, it was a chance to advance to the next rank. For Shikamaru, well he didn't really want it to there. For Naruto, the Chunin exams was two things. A chance for promotion and a chance, no, an opportunity to humiliate Namike's Jean. Five of the seven competitors had already arrived whilst Jean and Naruto was still missing. The five finalists stood in the middle of the arena, nervous, excited, and a little fear in everyone. Even Gara, The San Jinchuriki had seen what the blonde could do. Most of him was already bloodthirsty but a small part of Gara was already scared of facing him. The proctor, standing in front of the five of them, noticed two genins missing. Those two had better arrive soon, or he would be forced to disqualify them. But considering how one of them is the Hokage's son, that wasn't likely. In fact, the Hokage himself wasn't even here yet. The Kazakage who was sit at the Kage stand, narrowed his eyes in frustration. If he himself decided to show up on time, he expected the damn Hokage to do the same, especially if said Hokage is known as the Yellow Flash, user of the Horatian no Jutsu. And even more especially if said Kage lived in the same village, but that was before a large flash of light appeared in the arena. Namike's Minato, donning the white Kage robes holding his famous three-pronged kunai in his right hand, while the other was holding on to the shoulder of his Jinchuriki son. Namike's Jean, looking at the proctor, Minato gave an arrogant smirk we aren't late are we? The proctor, Gekko Haid gave a fake smile before assuring them of their impeccable punctuality with much sarcasm. The Yandame looked at the competitors and after seeing Naruto not with them, his smirk got even wider. It seems that the last finalist is not here yet. He sighs deeply. With much regret, I must this but he was interrupted. Who says I'm not here yet, Hokage-sama? A sudden voice coming from the entrance turned everyone's heads. From the shadows of the entrance, Naruto appeared. Many gasps went around the stadium. The blonde was wearing his regular all-black shinobi uniform. Only it was stained with a dark liquid. Naruto bloody and battered walked into the arena. His normally golden blonde hair was now a mixture of crimson and yellow. Naruto was limping into the field while cradling his left arm. Minato narrowed his eyes what happened to you the Yandame was obviously angry about something Naruto smiled it turned out several Kanoha Jounins was very opposed to me winning. My match today and ambushed me. Harsh whispers went through the crowd. It's okay though, I took care of them for you, Hokage-sama. Naruto grinned before holding up six headbands, all stained in dark red. Weirdly enough, they mentioned your name, Hokage-sama something about you telling them to stop me from coming here but I guess they were just lying, weren't they, Hokage-sama? Naruto finished, emphasizing on the last Hokage-sama. Minato looked at the headbands, quietly seated. Shut up and get in line with your fellow genin. Or do you feel not up to the challenge, since you are injured after all? Naruto chuckled. I wouldn't miss this for anything. 
The older blonde clenched his fist before using Horatian to reappear at the Kage stand. Haid raised an eyebrow at the exchange while it seems all of you are here. He said, looking at the Genins before he faced the crowd. The first match will be Namike's Jean against Namike's Naruto. At that many started questioning themselves and the people beside them, whether they have ever heard of the existence of another Namike's, moreover the fourth son. The proctor turned back to the finalist Jean, Naruto, stay here. The rest of you go to the waiting area. The five who did not belong moved off towards the waiting area where Hate had pointed out. Staring each other down, Jean and Naruto mentally prepared themselves. The Jinchuriki decided to start the battle first with taunts and insults. Bullshit like bloody idiot was used repeatedly, making use of Naruto's current blood-stained attire. Using the Shosen no Jutsu, Mystical Palm, and A-ranked Medical Ninjutsu, Naruto was able to get his arm and leg working. At least for the whole duration of the fight. Already, the judges were impressed by the high-level medical ninjutsu that was just used. The proctor turned towards them. Now, I want a clean and fair fight. Although I'm required to say that, we all know as shinobis, honor isn't really our forte. Now Hajime, Jin jumped back, gaining some distance between the two. Naruto stared straight into his brother's eyes. Jin I am only going to say this once. I am not here to win. I am here to utterly defeat and humiliate you. Said Jinchuriki narrowed his eyes and gritted his teeth in anger. As if, loser. Trash will be trash, no matter how big they talk. Naruto, ignored him and started the battle with a burst of speed. He immediately reappeared beside Jean giving a kick to his ribs. Jean flew away, landing on the ground with a large cry of pain. The blonde looked his brother and whispered, I will definitely definitely Naruto reached down him and unbuckled a scroll tied to his waist. Unrolling it, Naruto bit his thumb and spread a line of blood on the scroll's storage seal. A plume of smoke appeared. Naruto grabbed the object he just unsealed out of the smoke and settled into a stance. This is it. This is what he trained past his humanly limits for the past month. Years of tolerated bloodlust and anger today he will finally be able to unleash his wrath against the object of his fury. It already took everything he had not to end the little bastard's life right there and then. But no he will slowly torture him. Jean Jean will wish he had never been born. As the smoke dispersed in his hands was the Tsuruji Naruto had been practicing with for the month. With a burst of chakra from his feet, Naruto jumped towards Jean, his sword halfway into a slash. Jean barely fished out a kanai from his messy, unorganized tool pouch and was able to block Naruto's swing. Only for a second though. The next second, Naruto had already sliced the kanai in two, but stopped his blade right before it hit Jin's forehead. His brother's eyes widened in fear. No not enough. He has to suffer more. Naruto kicked Jin away. Jin, put up more of a fight, or else I might not be able to stop in time and really accidentally kill you. The Jinchuriki narrowed his eyes in anger. Don't talk big, trash. Take my raisin gan. Summoning two shadow clones, he began to form the spiraling sphere. Naruto was torn between two decisions. Overpower him with a stronger technique, or overpower him with another Raisengan. Deciding on the latter, he resealed the sword and easily formed a Raisengan in his palm within a second, meanwhile Jean and his clones were still trying to form the Raisengan. Naruto deadpanned at his twin. Five seconds later. Yash. Now eat this. Raisengan. Jean yelled as his two Kagebunshins dispersed, and he charged towards Naruto, holding the Raisengan. Naruto did not bother to brace himself for impact. As Jin's attack neared him, the blonde merely put out his palm with the Raisengan, and his technique met Jin's. A second was all he needed as Naruto's Raisengan easily ripped through Jin's sphere. Jin stared at Naruto's Raisengan in fear. It was an inch from his face. No this isn't enough. Dispersing the Raisengan, Naruto kicked Jin away again. Come on, put up a goddamn fight already. I don't want this to end too quickly. I am going to savor every moment the blonde yelled across the field. I can't help myself, but I have to complain about the working conditions on this website. You guys have no idea how hard it is to write out the battle between Naruto and Jean. It's like pitting a civilian infant against the s rank ninja. There's barely anything to write with. Is it my fault for making Jean so pathetically weak? The Jinchuriki picked himself up glaring at his twin. Team, don't get too cocky just because you got in one or two lucky blows. I didn't want to use this so soon, but Jean reluctantly formed a hand seal. Naruto raised an eyebrow before his entire body glowed and he erupted in pain. Glowing blue lines covered his body in an intricate pattern. Even from the massive pain tolerance Naruto had gained, nothing could be compared to this nerve-wrecking pain. Just pain coursing through his entire body. He couldn't help it. Naruto screamed. He fell down on one knee and screamed in pain. The audience looked at the lesser-known Namikaze in confusion. Did one of the hero's attack reach him? Minato smirked. Not an arrogant smirk. But one of those I just killed my greatest enemy smirk. Jin's face mirrored his father's. Seeing Naruto's pain he started to explain what just happened. That glowing thing on your body? That's a few injutsu dad helped me put on you. It's completely tattooed on your body with invisible ink. I don't really understand it, but from what dad told me, whenever I make this seal right here, Jean proved his point by forming the same hand seal. 
Naruto's pain intensified. You feel even more pain. Jean finished. By the time his explanation ended, Minato was looking a little nervous. Little did Jean know, the field had a jutsu placed on it. A jutsu where the conversation between the two combatants would be broadcasted throughout the stadium. Half were looking at the yandame, mouth agape while the other half was looking at Jean, eyes scrunched in disdain. As the crowd started to boo did Jean realize he just fucked up big time with a capital F. In that one moment he lost concentration, the few jutsu lost power. Naruto grabbed a hold of that chance, and despite the devastating pain in him, he got up, charged forward, lunged forward at his brother. His hand reached out and caught Jin's throat in a vice grip. Still holding his throat, Naruto ran forward, dragging Jin along and BM. He smashed Jin into the arena's wall. Oh, he was beyond pissed. You little fucker, Naruto shouted, angry beyond belief. Jin was desperately clawing at his hand in a futile attempt at making him let go. Jin's hands were released from the seal, and because of the lack of oxygen, he forgot about forming it again. Jin's eyes rolled into the back of his head. And all of a sudden, Naruto felt a pulling sensation. And then darkness. The blonde opened his eyes to a strange sight. He was lying in water, staring at pipes across the ceiling. He stood up, only to see his brother lying down unconscious a few feet from him. What the hell just happened? Naruto looked around, trying to find an exit but a loud booming voice interrupted his search. Another human? How is this possible? Locating the direction where the voice came from, Naruto ran towards the end of the corridor and found the source of it, and everything was clear to him. Cage seal, Fox Naruto looked up at Kyuubi behind the bars. You must be the Kyuubi, said Fox eyes widened in amusement. At least you are smarter than my host. Tell me, you look like that accursed mortal who sealed me in here, are you related to him in any way human? Naruto thought about his choices for a brief moment, while Kyuubi observed the human in front of it. Yes I see it. Confusion ambition cunning and dark yes very dark, Naruto made up his mind. My name is Namikaze Naruto son of the accursed human who sealed you into my moronic monkey of a brother. And now you answer my question. QB smiled and what is that, human? And understand, my patience is wearing thin. Naruto nodded why did you attack Kanoha? QB laughed. You humans amuse me. There isn't a reason for every action in the world you know. I woke up from my thousand year slumber, and they were there, and I just wanted some destruction and mayhem. Yeah, I know Madara used QB to attack Kanoha. But I ain't giving so much power to the Uchiha in this story. So they can't control the bijou. End of story. Now it's my turn to ask you a question, right? QB gave a toothy smile, his massive teeth showing. Naruto shrugged, seeing no problems in their exchange. Will you tear off the seal? Naruto smirked. And not all humans are as stupid as my brother, you know? QB narrowed its eyes. You dare defy me. Oh, shut it, Fox. You may think all humans are brainless monkeys that fear you. But from how I see it, there's nothing to fear from a powerless hairball in a cage, Naruto casually said while turning his back to the beast. With that, Naruto pushed himself out of his brother's mind, which is strangely a sewer considering his upbringing. One would think his might would resemble a castle, leaving Kyuubi roaring and shouting death threats. He returned to the real world, finding his hand still on his brother's throat. Only a short moment passed in the real world, that was weird, but it was time to end this. Still gripping Jin's throat, he dragged Jin off the wall and hurled him across the field. Jin landed near the middle of the arena as his conscience entered his mind. The Jinchuriki arrived in the same sewer but this time, he could already hear Kyuubi roaring in anger. When Jean entered the room, he was treated to a terrifying sight. Kyuubi was slamming itself at the cage, not caring about its welfare. The cage looked close to buckling under Kyuubi's immense pressure. It took a minute for Kyuubi to notice Jean standing not far from the cage shaking in fear. Human, I will rip you apart. By now, the Kyuubi was already blinded by rage, but all of a sudden, Kyuubi froze. It appeared to be deep in thought. It was actually quite terrifying for Jean to see a massive beast suddenly freeze. Human Kyuubi began. You are fighting that impudent whelp outside, correct? Jean could only stutter in reply. Why you mean mean and Naruto? Kyuubi narrowed its eyes. Yes that mortal who dared defy me. The human called Naruto. I will not repeat this. I shall grant you my power and in return you will kill him. You shall destroy that pathetic human who defied Kyuubi. Jean widened his eyes. Even with his tiny cranium, he could understand the possibilities, the prospects of such a privilege. Oh of course, I will crush that trash like the maggot he is. Kyuubi's eyes lit in amusement. Then go, my vassal. Jean flew back into reality with a massive explosion of demonic chakra. A wave of killing intent swept the entire arena. Even Naruto could not help but freeze for a second or two. Jean rose up dramatically slow. Naruto widened his eyes. I can't let him strike first. Unsealing his Tsuruji Naruto raced forward. With the Kyuubi's chakra out, it wasn't a battle to win now. It was a battle to survive. Meanwhile, the audience all either outright fainted or cringed in fear at the sight of the concentrated demonic chakra surrounding their hero. The Kazakage almost stood up in shock, barely able to control his emotions. Th that's. 
while Minato seated beside the Kazakage brightened considerably, forgetting the previous looks of disdain. Jean on the other hand was feeling aesthetic. The rush demonic chakra gave him was comparable to nothing Jean ever felt. It wasn't as malicious as the last time QB gave him chakra. This this was amazing. Jean felt stronger than ever. Hell, he felt like he could take over the entire elemental nations if he wanted. The Jinchuriki watched as his brother flew towards him and thought about stopping him. To his gleeful surprise, a claw formed from the chakra cloak reached out towards Naruto. Naruto seeing the chakra claw heading his way, pumped wind and fire chakra into his Tsuruji. A bright white flame emerged from the hilt and enveloped he blade. With a single slice of his sword, a wave white flame flew towards the chakra claw. The two attacks hit and for a few seconds, the two techniques battled it out, each struggling for dominance. But to the blonde's dismay, the chakra claw emerged victorious as it barely tore through the burning wave of firewind chakra. As the demonic hand reached nearer and nearer, Naruto with all his strength slashed apart the demonic claw and stopped. That attack really took a lot out of him. He wasn't the one with a demon stuck in him and hence have an unlimited amount of chakra. No, he was only human with limits. Jean for some reason was still standing in the same spot. The Jinchuriki raised his hands and looked at them, marveling at his own strength. Reaching for a soiled pill within his pouch, Naruto immediately popped two in his mouth. Even if he wasn't a Jinchuriki, his chakra reserve was still considerably large, at least twice an average jonin. Naruto could see his regular attacks wasn't going to work here. He had a limited amount of options. Ninjutsu might work, but from what he have seen, Jean would just overpower any technique he threw. Taijutsu was out of the question. Demonic chakra was extremely deadly to humans, the red cloak would burn his hand even before his attack reached him. Genjutsu might work, but there was no telling how it would affect a Jinchuriki infused with demonic chakra. That left Kenjutsu and Fuinjutsu. Instantly, a dozen ceiling arrays flew through Naruto's head. Yes, that would work. As Jin stared at his hands, marveling in the extreme surge of power Kyuubi's chakra granted him still, Naruto began carefully drawing almost random symbols on his Tsuruji. Ceiling arrays. A minute passed, and for some goddamn reason, G 